cameras are a little messed up at the moment. Yes, they are. But I'm going to fix it. Got these new boarders. I try to get with the guy and see if he can like give me ones with like less of a a thing at the bottom. <laughs> All right, not bad. Bye. Yeah, it'll just have to be, it'll just have to work. All right. Um, give me a sentence, each of you. Uh, sentence, each of you? What is that? Perfect. What you... Okay. Yep. Hello, this is a sentence from Yip. All right, perfect. Let me turn myself down just a smidge. There we go. Just making sure our audio are about the same. we go okay all right uh i'm gonna tweet out real quick we should be about ready to go i do need to fill up my drink though before we go any cool stories non non wow related for the pre-show here while i make my drink up non wow related stories i got a pretty cool new toy i can show off on stream now i guess i can oh, show you guys yeah let's see it uh so it uh oh it didn't work too well hold on oh man i'm bad at it now i did it okay damn okay hold on oh i got it i swear i can do this well there we go oh there it is oh yeah, I gotta walk around town and just. Whoa, oh, that was yeah. a good one. <laughs> That's a I can I can see it's a trained skill. It's like learning an instrument. Yeah, right? exactly. It's like a trained skill. Exactly. Oh yeah, you gotta, then you got to start putting the 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 you know the body language into it. Get, oh okay. Get, little, <laughs> get really into it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, that, that's, that's good. I bought that. I've been calling my parents. My family i walked around a grocery store the other day with it and got one of the co one of the workers at the grocery store to laugh at me so that was uh it's been, <laughs> it's been having way too much fun with this <laughs> that's really good that is uh where do you where do you I, I guess you just got it online i bought it online yeah yeah, yeah. Some, YouTube, some youtuber that i'd never heard of before i just found it uh so leslie nielsen the uh you know naked gun and uh airplane and just the, the great actor uh he was on he had uh popped up my youtube recommendations and he was on a you know a, a conan o'brien show and he just happened to have this you know bladder that he pressed and he made these noises and he was being hilarious and just great so i was googling like where did you get that where is it from and then this thing popped up it's not the same thing it's it's kind of close but it's not exactly what he had but i was like oh i gotta i gotta get it so i did <laughs> right, so i heard it what does it look like no, uh, the news is doing that. <laughs> ah, okay. Just a little, little hole, and then the, it's just the red, it's just the bladder. No, nice. it's. Uh, should make uh, some fun noises. <laughs> I practiced all of my life, like you do all kinds of div of div different farts. Those are very important skills we've <laughs> we've developed as adults. Uh, the, so. the whole armpit thing, you know. Yeah, I haven't tried that in going, years though. Kid, you got the armpit. You got the. You got to find the the knees. And we're doing it the <laughs> knees as a kid, laying back and just kicking your knees and making lots of farts that way. That was good. Yeah. Uh, hey, Zim and Chat Mel uh, has got to do stuff for her mom. Is not gonna be able to make the show this this week, unfortunately. All right.
I think we are. Let me get my notes. I think we're ready to roll. Let's do it. Um, before we start, did you want to read this email? I didn't know if you did or not. You talked about it. Um, nah. I'll just. Uh, I I want to talk to the dude. I think I want to do a pre-recorded segment with him. Okay. Cool. I'll just record it. Um. Yeah, we can just email him back. And do that. Alrighty. Well, you don't want to like preface it on the show. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, I think we're good. To, we're good to go. All right. This one's just for me. Welcome to Warcraft Reloaded, a podcast brought to you by Mash Those Buttons, covering World of Warcraft Classic, TBC Classic, and its community. I am Bobby, also known as Blazin' Bob, and today we're joined by Ryan, a.k.a. The Yip Show. Welcome. Hello, Bob. Hello. Mel's not here, sorry. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Bob. Yeah, Mel could could not make it this this week. She's still helping her mom quite a bit, and this time kind of falls into the time for dinner, and so she should be back next next week. And uh, but in her stead, we have first time on the show, creator of of Noobcore, streamer extraordinaire, classic Andy Jamin. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, classic Andy, absolutely. I, well, I'm glad to be here, man. It's been it's a pleasure. Awesome. Yeah, it's we're glad to have you on. I we were gonna have you on a long time ago, and it was my fault. I dropped the ball. We first met in that uh, in that uh, Kara run, right? Yeah, it was a TBC beta, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It was the craziest. Uh, it was the craziest group. It was you, me, Ale, Josh Corbett. Uh, Willie, bad season. Mel, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a wild ride. Yeah, it was a lot of people. It was cool. It was cool to see all those people. It's, a, it's been a, I don't think I've done anything like that since. Where just like all these creators working together, just having fun in the beta. Oh, it was so cool. Around. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was super, super starstruck by Mad Season. Like I know Willie, I know everybody else, you know. And so, but Mad Season, I was like, uh, hey. <laughs> it was a little bit of a fan out, but you know, it was, it was, a, it was a good time. All right, guys, uh, I'd like to start the show out by re reminding you that we now stream the show on twitch.tv slash blazinbob. That's B L A Z Z I N B O B. You guys have been coming out and supporting us, and it's cool. Come see us, interact with us live on the show, and possibly get something you say said. So. Come join us. We're going to get jump into the show. We're going to start out with, we didn't have any new reviews. We uh, we did have an email, but Yip's going to get in contact with the guy. Might be something fun for later segment. We're going to go over what... so crazy. That's why I am going to bring it up really quick. It is just <laughs> a benediction lover who wants to talk about how great benediction is. So I, I will preface it with that, and I'll, I'll be in contact with this person, and we'll see. We'll see about that. I thought it was going to be sensual lore read read to you by Yip. <laughs> I almost rolled on Benediction. Almost did. Never. It didn't quite. I ended up on Scarum instead, which I don't know if that was the right choice, but Benediction uh, almost almost rolled there. Uh, it's yeah. you. You would be in trouble now if you're a horde, but uh, <laughs> be, the, be opposite the opposite of what of you had at Scarum. Yep. <laughs> Oh, uh, then we're gonna go over some raid progress. Uh, were were we prepared or, or not? And then we're gonna get into the news, and then we're gonna wrap it up with a cool interview with Jamin and some talk about Noobcore. So, strap in. Let's go. Hell yeah! What have we been doing late lately? And wow, who wants to go first? I'll go first. I've been in Sethic Halls making a lot of gold. <laughs> I paid back my epic flying form, finally. 
Uh, it took like a day in Suffolk Halls because feral druids are overpowered and I make a ton of money now as an enchanting feral. Um, that's all I've been doing. Raiding and then making money. <laughs> and PvP. The daily, the dailies, big fan of the honor dailies still. Huge fan of wow. uh, doing the spirit towers and the hellfire fortifications. Just slowly racking up the, the honor and the marks with the daily uh, PvP daily too. That's, that's about it. Just maintenance. Yeah, the PvP changes are pretty good for actually getting gear now, and I am, uh, I'll be back with you there soon, but uh, it was funny, last night in Raid, uh, someone said something that they could give you, and he's like, I can, and Yip was like, I, I can pay for it, I have my own gold now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was so excited the way he said it. Well, it's actually, our, our leather workers never have nethers, so... I ended up having to drop a little bit of gold, extra gold, because our, our leather workers uh, are raid loggers, I guess. I, they're not really raid loggers. They just, no one does heroics. I guess. <laughs> that's, the real, that's the real answer. Well, you can buy nethers now with 10, with 10 badges. That seems like a huge waste of money <laughs> or a waste of badge wealth. When new badge gear is going to come out. Yeah. It's like, do you want to go back and run care for badges, or do you just want to store your badges from now? Because like, te- like nethers are eventually going to be BOE as well too. Ah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that trade off. Yeah, I mean, when care comes out, half, oh, I think over half of the bosses drop two each. I mean, it's like you get a ton of badges for it. Yeah, Zolomon will have badges too, but even still, if you need like 120 badges, like I don't spending 10 on a nether doesn't feel that good. You're valuing your your badges at at very little. All right. Well, Jamin, besides Noobcore cuz I really want to dive into that. If you've been, yeah. what what else have you been doing in wow? N- nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. I literally don't have time to. Uh it's all I do now is cuz it's like I mean, I, we'll talk about it, I'm sure, but it's it's just low-level twinking, so it just takes forever. You have, like, tons of mats to do, and there's no experience turn off, and so, yeah, it's it, you have to you have to really value your time and weigh what your options are, and you're trying to get all these little, just, like, one extra point of stamina just by, like, what can I get? Can I get two more extra stamina points? And uh, so all my time is literally just spent uh, just fishing and skinning and and all t- sorts of uh, professions for it, but uh, honestly, it's it's all everything I do right now is that. All right. Well, one cool thing we could talk about is the interesting thing you do with 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 fishing, and this is something I didn't know until yeah. Wiggy talked about it on F's and Chat. But you fight with a actual an actual fishing pole, and uh, yeah, it's a way. Uh, it's way nicer. Um, using a fishing pole than uh, in hardcore because I play a lot of hardcore. So if anyone doesn't know me and my introduction to anybody should be first is that I play a lot of hardcore classic WoW. Uh, I pl- I've been playing it for I don't know, two and a half years now, uh, around how long we've been doing it. Uh, but at some point while playing, I remembered that in the beta, I was watching uh, them play the beta. They're clearing Cathedral at level 30. And they're using fishing poles. And I was like trying to remember, why would they use it? It's because fishing poles use your fishing skill to calculate your, uh, your chance to hit. Yeah, right? your weapon skills. So your you could literally be have right, so. like chance to hit a, a, like astronomical yeah. higher. You can hit skull level mobs with no problem. Uh, and then there's uh, there's a lot of like very s- small nuances to it. But basically... You never miss. So one of the biggest problems as a melee attacker in hardcore is not having a reliable melee attack and not knowing when you're going to hit, whether it's glancing blow. If you're a warrior, you don't generate enough rage because you you miss. Now you can't kill the target. Uh, and, and missing don't, just makes it so that now you don't know if you'll be able to kill this target, right? I know if I attack this guy three times in a row, he'll die. Oh my gosh, I missed three times in a row. Now I'm dead, right? There's, there's an RNG aspect to playing in hardcore where you're fighting a guy and you're determining in your head, you're doing, you know, whatever calculations your brain is doing saying, I have this much more time to kill this guy before I'm out of HP. Can I kill him? Is it possible? And usually, you know, obviously if you're playing very safely, it usually is, but you can, you know, and so what the fishing pole does, is it re- removes that, that factor. 
That was an amazing. Uh, is a regular weapon better than a fishing pole? Absolutely, it is. Yes, if you're fighting regular mobs that are your same level, uh, but the fishing pole just makes it. I don't know. I just use it because now I don't have to look for weapon upgrades. I can just chill with this pole. Uh, I've tried to get level four, uh, 60 before hardcore just using a fishing pole, but I've only made it to level 44. It was my my best attempt. I died at level 44. I got this incredible fishing pole that you can get out of uh, the hinterlands. Uh, it's a uh, big iron. Nat Nagel's Extreme Angler oh, FC 5000. Okay. It's 38.8 DPS. It's like better than a Ravager in DPS. So you get this weapon, you can get it at level 44, and it never misses. It can't miss. Glancing blows don't matter. It's an incredible weapon that get you all the way to 60, no problem. And after I got it, I had such like this like feeling of like, well, I've, I've accomplished the hardest part of this run. Like, I, there's no way I die now. I've done everything. And I died immediately, right? On the next, I went to Feralis and I just <laughs> died on a, a pack of uh, uh, gnolls. And I was like, what am I? I'm so mad at myself because I did, it was such a difficult thing to do. And then I finally got it and it's all good, whatever. It's, but it's, but yeah, fishing pole is really nice. And so when we do these low level raids and noob core, uh, we're able to attack mobs that are, you know, nine levels higher than us, six levels, nine levels, whatever we decide to go in at. Uh, we can hit them without missing and, you know, having an idea of who's going to be able to generate threat and who's going to be able to do things. You have to know when you're going to hit stuff to be able to, uh, you know, at work as a group. You have Things need to be reliable. If they're not reliable, you can't make a plan because then you're just reacting. You're not actually, you know, doing stuff. So the fishing pole has been really good there as well. Nice. Yeah. I actually, you know, before I even was re reminded that I do, there was something weird with it. Cause when me and my wife worked up our, our, our druids, I went to darn and I bought the plus five pole and the DPS on it's way higher than any, than anything I could buy and use at that, at that level. And I was just smacking with it. And I was like, this must just not use weapon skill at all or something. And now that I now that I realize it was because I had fishing maxed for my level and was just like smacking people yeah. down with it. You also I've heard, I'm not I haven't done any testing to make sure this is real, but I read on a I read on a Wikipedia page the other day that uh fishing skill also gives you crit chance against these targets. So because you're a higher weapon skill than them, uh, depending on if you have the twenty five fishing skill from like uh, the Nat Pickles Extreme Angle, that's like 1% crit also uh, because you have such a higher skill level than the target. Uh, so I don't know how true that is. I haven't really gone to look and see what my crit chance is, if it lines up with my character sheet on my... But supposedly uh, having such a high you know weapon skill with fishing skill above your enemy, you're going to crit more. But uh, I, wow. I haven't tested it at all. All right, well, for me, um, I've been, you know, doing rating stuff. I... I'm killing it on gear to start out this uh, phase. It's very different from last phase. Last phase, I got a weapon, and then everything else was kind of like, eh? Like, you got the boots, and you got the belt of blasting, but really, the tier wasn't worth anything. And so I got four-piece tier now. I got We got the, the, the bracers of nimble thought pattern dropped. We all got those that wanted to bid on the hearts. Um, like I'm just feel I got the 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 uh, vestments from Vash, which is just nuts. So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm doing pretty good there. As far as hardcore, I did finally get my first character to level sixty. My rogue hit sixty yesterday, right before raid. It was unfortunate. Level fifty eight to sixty was with the new X experience changed but there was nothing i could really do about it i didn't have time to do it prior yip had said something about maybe i could have just grinded and then it you know it would have still been there but i hey, thought about that <laughs> i thought about that but i did something i think i did something harder i did all the western and eastern plague lands quests and about like shit my pants for like a good three or four hours yeah. straight. Like it was, it was terrifying. That place, all those elites rolling around. Oh, dude, it's terrifying. And like, there's stuff hidden. Stuff shows up out of nowhere. The freaking, uh, well, what's it called, guys? The the guys that you get. No, after you get the blood off the ground. The oh, the blood of heroes. 
Yeah, and it spawns yeah. those two sixty-one el- el- elite guys that run like the f- the f- the Flash, hit like Superman, yeah. and yeah. have a knockdown and a slow and everything else. And a slow that lasts a minute. Oh, it's like horrible. So, I did I did complete in a little bit of st- of style, and now I'm in hardcore elite. I don't know where that's going to take me. I don't know if there's any prebis runs even going, but if so, I'll do I'll do some of that, but gonna be jumping back into tbc doing some more pvp get my rogue back up and yeah i'm just loving both classic and tbc at the the moment and yeah it's basically where i'm at there but yep do you want to let them know what happened in raid well i'm gonna preface it by talking about our guild struggles of raid in that (laughs) we had to switch out our paladin because our other paladin disappeared uh no just kidding he uh he decided he didn't want to play anymore and we had someone who wanted to step up so we were like let's try to rush him into action as soon as possible so someone doesn't have to just like keep playing a game they're burnt out on um so we this saturday we switched to our you know quote unquote switch to our new paladin and we ran we had to get him attuned of course because he's way behind he's in karazhan gear uh, which is worrisome because uh, <laughs> their paladin has to like tank Illidan <laughs> and stuff like that. And we have not gotten our Illidan kill. So switching paladins is uh, pretty uh, scary. But in the long run, we figured it, it would make sense to do it as soon as possible. So um, we go to uh, SSC and TK and it goes pretty flawlessly. We were pretty uh, happy, I think, with uh, how a first night with like alts and not a full group. Actually, we actually might have had a full group now that I think about it. I think we actually had someone sitting on, on that Saturday, which was nuts. We've had insane off-night turnout, which has been really cool. Um, everyone's been really active in the guild. So that was great. Um, he got some gear. Uh, he did not have enough gear yet to tank Illidan, because Illidan requires extra avoidance, because he can't miss on sheer. Um, so Illidan's scariest ability in like the quote-unquote easy phases uh, is he shears the tank, and if it isn't mitigated by block or any other avoidance, then you get a debuff that takes away 60% of your life. And then his other attacks kill you, because you wow. have not a have very high health total. Uh, so Paladin's really good for it, because they just holy shield and they have like full block avoidance. Uh, but if you don't have any gear, because like I said, he's in phase one gear, uh, we're we're a little worried about that. So going into our Tuesday night raid, we were hoping to pick up some pieces for him. Uh, there's like, I think I, I was like, I was looking, <laughs> I get a lot of like secondhand enjoyment from pe- people getting geared up really quickly. I'm like, Ooh, a new tank with no gear. Like every item that drops is going to be an upgrade. That's going to be fun. Not a single piece he needed dropped. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I mean, he, he did get his like tier five stuff. Um, that was dropping really good on Saturday, but the stuff he needed for Illidan didn't drop. Um, so but the raid went really well. The uh, we honestly did not miss a beat. Our high jaw was faster than ever. Um, Dude, we got our high jaw was than almost. Ever on Tuesday. If we would have beat him on the first poll, it, we would have been like what second on the server or something like that. Yeah, maybe. I, Speed I, I wise, didn't, I didn't really look. Um, but it was it was very fast, and we weren't like trying to be fast. It just was like fine, and everyone was on point. And it's a it's pretty easy <laughs> raid, which which helps. Uh, and we got a lot of pumper casters, so that was really nice. But the Paladin hey. was doing a great job. He was already uh, doing what he needed to do really well. It is very hard for locks. I have to hit one button. And yeah. like you get tired when you just hit that over and over again. You're just <laughs> spamming as fast as you can. I mean, it starts oh, to like cramp up eating. a bit. Yeah. You have to use the other so hand, you know, like while you're taking a drink, you're using yeah. the other hand. and There's like a rogue in there, blade flurrying like two mobs. <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's so hard to be a warlock. I'm doing 8k DPS. And in uh, life is, is really tough here. Um, but our new paladin uh, is was incredible that night. Super stoked. He hadn't done any of the trash, hadn't done any of the bosses, and he, he picked up like no problem. We got further in Black Temple, of course, because we had more time there. Um, so on that night, we got all the way up to mother, which is exactly where we wanted. I think we, we ended up being like 15 minutes over time, but we had this kind of silly wipe on blood boil, which shouldn't have happened, which we basically in our raid time got all the way up to mother, leaving three bosses for Thursday, uh, which is as ideal as it can get for killing Illidan, uh, because we also wanted to do a trash farm and the mother trash is super 
super easy. Uh, so Wednesday, we we get enough people to go do a, a quick vash. We do like a grill, which we got a DST in grill, which was pretty awesome. We've gotten back to back DSTs now. Uh, we've been rather unlucky overall, so that was nice to see. Um, Vash eludes my belt. My belt will never drop from Vash. Uh, it's the only thing I really, truly need. But that's okay. Uh, the trash farm, we got a spell haste ring, which was nice. Uh, we only did the trash once because uh, apparently you can't reset it because uh, we're big, big, dumb idiots. Yeah, uh, I know. Like, but, ev <laughs> but everybody talked about that. Like, I feel like maybe we did something wrong or something. Yeah, I don't well, know. We'll check it out again next week either way. But um, we did get, you know, you get a ton of gems. You get a ton of hearts. And then we got a spell haste ring. So we really couldn't complain with like a 20 minute trash farm on Mother Trash uh, to get all that. So that was really cool. Um, and then going into Thursday, I was feeling confident. Last week, we were having trouble with the elemental phase. We did not get past the elemental phase, phase two of Illidan. Uh, but things were pretty scuffed last week. I think people were uh, learning to fight. And uh, I did not have enough fire res for if I didn't have totem or fire res aura. I was just like, yeah, you get 70 extra fire res. And then. It's a little bit hard to keep it up, I guess. So I wore a little more fire as this week and, and um, that sort of thing. But uh, so pretty confident that we were going to be good on Illidan. Um, Mother ended up posing a bigger problem than uh, than before. Uh, my, my guess is that Mira, the other feral druid, was clearly just in full DPS gear with the kind of parts that he ended up getting. So that's my guess. But uh, the way Mother works is it's like a shared saber lash cleave. And we got hit by one of her like other abilities that I think just targets some. Like, I think it can target anybody and does it, like it, it's like a chain bolt um, and does a lot of damage. And it hit the tanks at the same GCD. A saber lash came out in the same GCD that I got hit by the main t by the uh, just the melee attack. So in one GCD, I got hit for like 25k, not crushing, no like. I was wow. just like that doesn't seem livable. <laughs> Uh, but we still cleared it. We um, had some weird stuff with the DPS underneath the f the fountain. Like, two or three times, someone breaking chains just ran right into us and, like, blew us up big time. Huh. <laughs> well, you know, um, even despite issues, though, we got a kill, which is always nice to see. I love bosses that we don't have to do well on and still kill, because <laughs> I like loot. Uh, so we did get the kill still, so that's that's totally fine. Um, like I'm sure, did Bob? Did you get those shoulders? Did you need those that night from from? Mother? Yeah, I was. Uh, I like basically, I just went all in big time on gear right off the bat to get like to get to get vestments, to get my bracers, and to get four set. And I needed that for my four for for my four set. So I went all in. And I only had to pay half of what I bid, which was which was nice. But now I've got the four set. I can just chill, sit back, and just hope that a lot of uh, you know skull of Gul'dan's drop and the yeah, uh, staff. Yeah, they do. But if hopefully, they don't, I, I've I hope I hope we get a ton of skulls of Gul'dan and zero war glaives. But sorry, go on. <laughs> uh, I was just saying, like I do have I do have the sword, you know, so. None of the other locks have the sword from, you know, from the last tier content. So, you know, it'll probably be a bigger upgrade for them. Like, so mm -hmm. I I had set on my DKP forever and was just like ready to spend. And arguably four piece is the biggest DPS upgrade period across for Warlock across this stage. So. Yeah, I did, I I did the same thing. I, I went ham on my DKP for my tier because uh, Feral Druid tier is completely broken. My threat, so just the two set makes my mangle do 15% more threat. And just that alone, the gap at the end of the fights was just like so insane for threat. It was like funny. Like, I don't, Druids are so dumb. I'm glad I switched from Warrior, but it's like frustrating <laughs> to see me just like scale better and better. And my Warrior would be like, I've got a little bit of armor pen now. <laughs> like, I'm a little <laughs> bit better. Um, but the druid's kind of kicking ass, which is awesome. Um, but then we move to Council, who is, I think most people say, is the hardest fight uh, of this current tier. As people who have killed Council and not Illidan, um, I guess I would disagree, but it was pretty hard last week. We we wiped maybe four times, I think, and then 
we got the kill uh last week but this week the first attempt uh was super rough i think we had Oh, I was going to say, I think we had someone who was new, but yes, of course, our paladin tank <laughs> uh, was new and uh, needed to learn uh, uh, the fight. So, of course, you can expect that, the, you know, as you get used to a fight, you might need to wipe once or twice. Um, but we put him on the rogue. Uh, I think that that, was, and that ended up being better because Mira could interrupt the priest, the feral druid could interrupt the priest. Uh, I could tank the main uh, guy pretty well. And then even if the paladin died, which he did on the on the wipe, I could still like feral charge and grab the the rogue when he popped back up, which was nice. Um, but he can the the rogue is like hodgeable; he can be stunned and stuff. So it's really good for a paladin um, to be on there. He can range to taunt, and he can do spell damage uh, in order to get through the bop. So he can like pick up the target really really easily as well too, which is nice. Uh, so there were a lot of benefits to doing it that way with the paladin on the uh, on Vera Ross. Vera, he's the rogue, so. That worked out good. And then on the second attempt, we got the kill. Like, I feel like it went pretty well. Um, I did some regearing to be a little dodgier, so that might have helped with uh, some of the healing. Um, but honestly, that fight is about just avoiding damage, and I think people did that for a majority of the fight. And then we kill it. And that was pretty... <laughs> it was uh, two attempts, which I think was really good. I thought that it seems like the kind of fight that you can easily wipe more than that on, so I couldn't be happier with that. Uh, and that left us with two hours in raid time, and probably like two and a half hours if we pushed raid time a little bit for Illidan, which is plenty of time in my mind. If you can't kill Illidan after two hours, it's like it's time to get back to the drawing board. Um, that's that that was my opinion on it. Like it, there'd have to be like a glaring issue. Um, I well, was a little worried though because yeah, I was thinking that the Paladin the tank Paladin, yeah. might be the glaring issue. Um, but again though, like if it is the issue, like he needs more gear or something like that. There's nothing you, you can't. It's hard. It's frustrating, but there's nothing you can really do about it. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll try again next week with the uh, with more gear. But he had some, he put in some 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 beautiful dodge, some beautiful block writing gems into his into his gear. Uh, tanked his health down. I don't really know what they normally gem. Maybe stamina, uh, maybe spell power. I don't know. Uh, but they do uh, paladin things. Cer certainly not block writing. Typically, that's the uh, the answer. But he did get to the avoidance that he needed, and. Um, well, we proceeded to wipe <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, we wiped a lot. Um, most importantly, the elemental phase. Ooh, we crushed it on the elemental phase. It was night and day compared to last week. Um, It'll... making sure that I could have like max fire res even without totem was genius because we, I could just sit and fire even if melee weren't around and just take it, and it was it was really good. Yeah, and the blue, f the blue flames, like they did the exact same thing as they did last week with that with that V. But I guess you guys, f you guys found out that like only if you get hit with the actual the thing that's making the laser that's making the blue flame, that's what hurts you really yeah, bad. The flame Walking itself, through it, yeah, yeah. The so uh, I think the we knew that the flame didn't do as uh very much damage. Like the I beam's a kill no matter what. Like if you get hit by the I beam, you're dead. Um, and it's kind of tough when you're taking like the boss and not trying to like hit the, um, hit the raid with the flame breath that the elemental does. But, uh, what we didn't realize is we could literally stand in the normal fire, the blue fire and tank the elementals like breath and just be healed through it. <laughs> I was like, we didn't even need to move from anything. So the whole time we we're thinking like, oh, we are allowed to take a tick or two, but in reality we can just sit there and, and eat as much as we need to. So just like taking it more calmly and just like eating that damage and telling healers to heal worked out just fine. So it, you were it, actually making it harder on yourselves last week. Yeah, we we're we were trying to be way more careful last week, which ended up making it worse. <laughs> this time we we took all the damage and just all I cared about was how much melee could actually hit the elemental so that it could die as quickly as possible. Um and for, for almost every attempt that ended up working out really really well, I think. Uh, the elemental would go down in, in plenty of time. Like I had petrified scarab up still, um, so it, it was really, really strong. Um, our is, DPS. You guys kept talking about that. What is petrified scarab again? It gives you a hundred resist for like a minute uh, of everything, and then every spell that hits you reduces that by what ten, I think, or something. So every spell that hits you, it keeps going down till zero. But on Hydros and the elementals on Illidan. They hit you with fire or water or water, frost or nature. 
uh, but they're melee attacks. They're not spells. So when you pop your scarab for that one minute, you just have a hundred extra resist. Um, okay. So that's like, that's why it's like kind of easy. I don't want to say easy, but it was really good. We went back to AQ to get me one <laughs> uh, because it makes it, I could wear like a lot more threat gear. And you saw like when the Paladin died on a couple of times, I could pick up Illidan and like hold him for a couple seconds. Sometimes it didn't work out, but sometimes I could hold him for a little while, even though I'm wearing like a bunch of uh, fire res gear because uh, I didn't have to wear like as much because of the trinket, which is nice. Gotcha. Uh, so okay. both, both of the druids have one of those. I was just super lucky. We only went back to do AQ once and we got petrified scarab and badge of the swarm guard. Yep, the <laughs> and we were red. like, we were like, all right, uh, I guess we're not going to come back here again. <laughs> we did. We got what we needed. Uh, let's, let's head on out. Uh, so that was super nice. Um, but yeah, so our, the problems that were occurring, um, so after phase two, which is the elemental phase, you go back to basically phase one again, except that you have one minute to DPS him until he goes into demon phase. And the way that the, the modern strategy, if you will, is to ignore demon phase, just DPS him down to 30% in that one minute, and then he'll not turn into a demon. You skip phase four and go into phase five, uh, which is just easier phase three basically like he'll enrage and kill the tank sometimes um but uh Maiev puts down a trap which will stun him for 20 seconds uh and you do 50 percent more damage on him and he only has 30 percent health left and you just took down 30 percent health in a minute so it's like it's so clear that you can get the kill at that point the, um, the problem little, we were having was that the weird. Paladin would die <laughs> uh the traps are are weird they don't in my head, they were gonna like proc right away, but you have to like hold them on top of them for a little while. Um, so I think we were just moving too slowly at first because in in our minds we were like, oh, they put the trap down. Let's start moving over to the trap, and then suddenly it was like enraged. The paladin is dead, and now he's just running all over the place, murdering everybody. Um, so we got to that stage a lot. Luckily, our DPS was good enough for the like skipping demon phase. Occasionally, we didn't. I think like one or two pulls we didn't and that we had some deaths on uh, the demons like popping out of form. Uh, but very quickly, he would end up going into that last phase because, again, 30% health is really not that much to get through. Um, the big things is just the Paladin keeping threat and then not dying. Um, well, and then we found out right before that, you got like the locks and everything have to drop. Th like you have to pop yeah. your uh, shard right there. You have to drop threat because... When he comes back up, he's got threat on one person, the top threat. And if you soul shatter at that point, you're the only one that has threat. So it doesn't matter if you soul shatter. You, you, it just goes Yeah, you basically boom. need the bop and the paladin needs threat on it like ASAP. But a couple of deaths there, because there's that stun trap, a couple of deaths there isn't a huge deal. You still will have the DPS to get him down. Um, the stun felt even longer than the 20 seconds, so I might even be wrong about that timer. But... Um, yeah, so I mean, we wiped I think eight times, <laughs> um, and it it was a it was pretty rough. We were pretty fatigued by the end. We had like forty five minutes left in raid uh, on our last pull, and honestly, <laughs> I we did get the kill, but I don't know if I feel accomplished enough <laughs> because. It was the only time we got to the last phase. The Paladin pulled Illidan to like one side because of the flame crashes. He pulled him to one side. And Maev runs straight to the Paladin, drops the trap on Illidan, basically. And then like the Paladin doesn't have to do any. He move yeah, he just has to move like a foot and Illidan's trapped. <laughs> and then we kill him and we got it. I was dead, which sucked, but <laughs> I was watching from the sidelines, and I was like, we just got the luckiest trap that could ever happen. Um, but hey, Illidan died, which was awesome. Uh, I think that with a little bit more gear, we edge out some of these problems. I think if the Paladin has a couple more pieces, he dies a little bit less, and Illidan will just get easier and easier from here. Uh, but next week will be interesting. Uh, I'm excited to see how next week goes, but we are 14 of 14 now. Um, I I went in kind of thinking we had to be. I think if we didn't get it, we'd all... Last week, I think we were disappointed we didn't get the kill in a, like, darn, I was really hoping to get the kill uh, last week. That would have been so cool. 
this week it would have been disappointed in like we really should have got the kill tonight <laughs> yeah it would have been bad and the fact that, yeah so uh you know it it was still really good and i'm still really happy with how we did uh and of course i think the biggest framing here that kind of changes the perspective of how hard it was is that we've had a new tank for one not even a lockout this was the first lockout we had a new tank the paladin had to main tank and we got it down <laughs> which i think says a, a whole lot like uh, i think that that's like a really incredible thing to do um especially on a dying server uh no white main alliance uh losing a tank should be like time to time to transfer to benediction <laughs> uh you know like losing in a really important role like that can be difficult but the fact that we were able to like no we didn't skip a beat we had our best raid week switching to a new paladin uh, well, everyone was really on point and i think that it, it was really good we had a really good raid week that's the well i mean it was even obvious to you people in my chat they were like is your tank under geared or something like he died instantly I was like, yeah, he's brand new. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. He, so this guy we brought in um, is a friend of our guild leader. He has been raiding on our server since the beginning of Molten Core, but he was just in another guild, and that guild transferred, and he didn't want to transfer, so we swooped up his Ellie Shaman. And his Ellie Shaman is amazing. His Ellie Shaman's his main, but we wanted him on his Paladin, so he swapped for us, but swapping... To an alt, like of course he's only phase one geared <laughs> when you make that swap. Like most people have like their care gear, their mag roll gear, maybe. Um, which I think he was even missing that. Um, but we we actually got that on Saturday too. We got his like chest from Mag and stuff, so we geared him up pretty quickly. So I, he has enough gear for us to do Illidan. He got the bulwark that dropped for him, so his armor's up. He looks like a cool guy. I don't have any FOMO. I feel bad, but I don't feel like, oh, I wish I was a warrior so I could be wearing that shield. Um, I really don't have that, like, I was looking forward to wearing it for a little bit on my warrior, but, like, I'm I'm, I'm still happy to be a druid. The druid is just so good that I can't even be like, oh, I want to be wearing the bulwark now. <laughs> uh, I'm just a big bear, and that's fine. Uh, but we, we got that, and we got the healing mace, which is, Jasmine got the healing mace. Super happy for Jasmine. But where is our DPS gear? Come on. We're not getting any DPS gear. Like, the tier's been dropping for DPS, but, like, nothing else is dropping, I feel like. Um, so get, I'm, I'm ready for some DPS gear to drop. A lot of the mechanics in this, with higher DPS, they become, like, almost cheesable. Like, a lot of them are, like, ramping up mechanics, where the longer the fight, the harder it is. But we're already killing them super fast. I just want to push that even faster. Uh, but yeah, we're 14 to 14. I think next week will still be re relatively interesting. Uh, but I think in a month from now, we're going to be speed running through this in, in a single night. I think that's where we're going to be at. Yeah. Then uh, ended out the night. You guys made us go kill KT. <laughs> Which was always the, the plan. Uh, we, we cleared up till KT on Wednesday. Of course we got to go kill KT. It, it was like funny because everyone was like dying. And no one was focused because his dad our, was God. Yeah, uh, yeah. Our 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 raid leader uh, disappeared to go fix a TV. For dad was gone. <laughs> Uncle Yip was doing his best to keep everybody, but was he was so happy like, from the Illidan kill he couldn't be yeah. mean to anybody. <laughs> like I had all this worry, especially for my part, because last week we were dying on my part, right? The well, elemental part. So all week I was like. I need to do everything I can. I need the best gear possible. I need the best enchants possible. Like, what's the best way to live on this fight? I was like, I'm not going to let this happen to me again. And uh, it was like a big relief when Illidan died. And then after the come down, I'm like, we're wiping on KT trash. Who cares? Like, I can't. Who cares? We killed Illidan. Like, <laughs> we're going to get oh, this man. down in a minute. So, uh, yeah. But we did kill KT again, which is nice. There's so much Biss gear off of... Uh, Vash and KT, it's hard not to if you do have the time, but we'll see how many times we go in the future. When, I don't know. I mean, that's why I I rolled so high on the on the vest on the yeah. on the vestments because I just I don't know how often we're gonna get in there with the full group and everything else, you know, for Lady Vash. But oh, we didn't even talk about that too. We found a really cool skip for Lady Vash. 
which which worked out good. We just like water walked. We bopped me, gave me uh, water walking, and then two other people water walked, and we walked all the way over to where we just had to kill two packs to go into Lady Vash. It was yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, so we'll we'll do that. Uh, I think we'll do that every time. It uh, did not take too long. Like I think getting there is the most annoying part, but like once you're in there, it's like a twenty minute experience now. If we can just like get on it fast, so that that'll be good. And Vash is, I hope. I mean, I guess I'm biased because I want Vash's belt. But I'm gonna be pushing to kill that every week. Oh, I'm, and I'm sure time. the locks are, and I think it's even best for the mages too. So. Yeah, and all the other melee want the expertise belt too. Maybe not as badly as I do, but I don't think anyone minds going and doing it. Yeah, KT's the one that's like meh, but Vash is still pretty. So far. KT pretty has good. so much trash, and it's like annoying trash. <laughs> like, ugh, so far in, and then the fight is annoying. Eh. Jamin, you don't play any TBC at all, huh? Uh, so I leveled a character, a paladin. I got him in tier four bis before tier five came out, and then I was, uh, I was kind of like, oh, all right. And then I started playing hardcore again, and I just didn't go back. I just never went back. I did. I did level a druid actually. I did some marinas uh, during season two. We got to like fifteen hundred rating or something, and my gear was awful. And we were like, ah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to work a lot to get my gear up, and like I'm gonna have to get just to be competitive. And I just don't feel like working this hard on this character because I'm not using the stream content. I wasn't using him as like anything. And I, I had a blast playing the Paladin though. I got my DST. Like I was the first one in the guild to get a DST as a oh, red wow, Paladin. Nice. Everyone was mad about it. That was great, dude. Heck yeah. Yeah, it's... I know one was mad about it, but everyone was like, do we just give that to a red Paladin? Really? Do we just... Like, like yeah. Arena isn't even just the gear. I mean, um, we had Snowby come on the show and one of our other... Guildmates Casimo and they you know play at a high level in our in arena and it just boils down to hundreds and hundreds of games played right. and learning yeah, yeah. every little bit like and and having the best gear like so yeah it's I yeah, mean we it's playing, it's we a lot Druid Warrior because it was it was just good it was amazing it was so much fun playing Druid Warrior and uh, it just became down to like I don't know this matchup at all I've never played against Priest Rogue right I mean obviously there's tons of that we played against that but like just playing against these classes and being like okay how do I deal with the guy what hit what are his options against me I mean I was I have never played Druid before it took me like I think it took me like I want to say 50, 60 games before I realized that if I was in bear form I couldn't get mana burned I was like wait oh what I can't get mana burned in mana form <laughs> or any form. I was like, oh my God, I'm so terrible at this game, dude. I need to get. Well, like, 1500 is pretty good, thing, though. Of course. But like, my brain was like, oh my God, I'm so bad. Like, it was one of those moments you're like, I am terrible at this game. And then you're like, there's so much of those little things that are just like, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But I guess every time you shift into bear, it costs mana. So you have to make sure that you're, you know, when you're, anyway, all those things. Oh, yeah. It was and just a lot of that. A lot of those moments where I was like, man, I have to just, I have to put in so much time. And as a healer, you needed to have a certain amount of spell, of 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 spell pen. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of rules. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot. I don't, like, I haven't broken, like, 1600s is the highest I've ever gotten. Like, and I usually, on most of my teams, we were bad cops, but we'd sit around, like, 1300s, so... I was playing with a, my cousin who was a gladiator. He got gladiator in wrath and uh, he was like trying to explain things to me. And I was like, I, okay, all right, all right. I got it. And he's like, no, we're just having fun. Man. We're just having fun. It's all good. I'm like, no, we're not. I just, we're playing competitive PVP. I have to be good at this. We're doing amazing at this. I'm like, it's just really frustrating. But uh, um, yeah, it's, it's all good. I, I just, uh, I haven't played since I just haven't had time or I haven't made time. It's funny listening to you guys talk about black temple and all that. And uh and thinking about oh man that is that is cool that, that those would be cool but then I'm like I have to go I have to put all this time in on my character again to get back and I'm just like ah, no I don't I don't need that I don't need to go back to, I don't have time for it I barely have time like I said I, I I everything I do I barely have time to do what I'm doing right now so yeah uh, it feels really uh, it's definitely a choice just like what you're capable of doing every week and uh, that, that's me in definitely. hardcore like yeah. I think that they, it's it's super fun I've enjoyed every moment and I've done it but I just I can't <laughs> like yeah. i just don't have it's the like a time choice. Like, um, yeah. yeah like i'm main taking tvc i feel like i i need to focus there first and then leftover time i'm like hardcore is, <laughs> it's an endeavor right yeah yeah it is absolutely it's a, and it just changes the way you approach the game completely right you're like 
not worried about end game content almost in any way. I mean, there is yeah. the season of mastery, a hardcore elite, and they're doing end game content still, which is great. Um, but again, it's the whole thing of like okay, how much time. And then if I die there, how much time just to get back to it to be like, I guess with the new the new buff to season of mastery is pretty nice. The hundred percent getting back to you know level sixty if you die or something is not too bad yeah. compared to what it was. But uh Yeah, I uh, assume I I don't know, I haven't done it yet, but I assume basically you just won't even have to do you know like you'll be 60 before you even get to winter like you'll probably end out in fellwood would be my guess with the with the um changes you won't even have to hit winters winter spring or western plague lands or eastern plague lands and so i'm guessing that that's you know the way it'll be with that that change but i i haven't really seen anybody work up yet so yeah Oh well, well, that was it for what what we've been doing in raid progress. So let's move into the news. Oh, so so real quick, uh, we'll have it in the the notes, but we're just mentioning it. There's the free character trans uh, transfers for NA and EU have been updated. It looks like they removed all of the mega servers as possible free transfer destinations so that's all i can really see that it changed i don't know if that had changed prior but it is changed now do you know yip uh no i think this is the first time that they have not been options but um i don't know i don't know what they're doing i can't <laughs> i they need to just let everyone go to the mega servers and end this charade it's getting ridiculous. Let me let me off white main. We're all ready to go. We all reserve names. Make it free for us. We're ready. But someone stole with, my with name. What they're doing. <laughs> so are, I, are we looking at like uh like a layered just a layered mega server? Is that what everyone wants now? Just 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 to throw everyone on the one server. It's what everybody's it's, showing they want. It's yeah. not what they want, but Blizzard has allowed people to transfer from the small servers to anywhere they want regardless right. of action um so the problem is is that now that the mega servers exist every other server is just dying our right. server every week is losing hundreds of raiders we're down to like i don't even know 13 percent of the server of alliance and every week it's just a, a, so many people we know yeah. Another guild gone. Another guild gone. Another guild gone. The best. Yeah, we guild we transferred to Mancrick from our guild. We were on Blood Cell Buccaneers. And we transferred to Mancrick. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's just you know you give the people the option, and it just doesn't make sense to not go if you want more chances at at guild recruitment. If you want more chances at, uh, you know like uh pre made BGs. If you want more chances yeah. at having our arena part your partners it just makes the most sense to go to a mega server where your 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 faction is the dominant faction and if given the choice people are just going to do that i think we should go to grobulus though they have a newspaper yeah i mean we <laughs> we could but i don't know it looks like a fun <laughs> server I'm just like the the biggest problem that I'm having is everyone's attitude of the people who are left. It's so toxic. First of all, I only see my guild out in the world other than uh, maybe there's there's like three main guilds that I feel like I could be wrong. Everyone else could be out doing something where I don't see them. But it seems like every guild raid lost except for like three guilds. I, every time I go out in the world, the only people are, I see are also in our guild or like these two other guilds. Um so it's pretty dire. And then even then, as soon as you see people, if you go into a dungeon, all anyone is talking about in, in general chat and trade chat and LFG, it's all about how the server's dead. It's all about how leave the server, the server's dead, the server's dying, can't get gr Everyone is just so wrapped up in the mentality of a dead server that even though our guild is flourishing, we have plenty of raiders, we've got We've got we're extremely wealthy thanks to Kim. He he, our bank, guild bank is full of mass. We get free flasks. We get everything we need taken wow. care of by the guild bank. It still makes us want to leave because the people left over are all so just like wrapped up in how bad the server is that like it's just depressing to be around. It is sad, uh, but I do. Yeah. Okay, you guys all know who who you are. And it's been happening a lot more as of late. 
but the horde that are fans of the podcast that just wave and then jump into my chat and say hi and don't kill us. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys are you guys are you guys are awesome. Thank you. How good you horn? You disgust me. <laughs> that's how that's how Who sad the server is. You it's, see that? You see that back there? That's important. Yeah. Okay. I I can honestly for anyone say, who's listening, I'm I'm gesturing to a horde flag behind me. It, it, it like switched. It switched from horde being like bloodthirsty freaks who are getting us off the server. We're now like their pets. When I see yeah. the around, <laughs> that's what happened like, on Scarum too. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh hello lions. Like you're so cute. It was oh, like a cool. server event you saw an alliance player. You're like oh look look they exist. There they are. Look at him go. <laughs> He's doing a quest. Oh it's adorable. We're we're getting we're getting that point. We're luckily not. We're we're not quite as bad as Scarum, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're on that route. I don't see how it doesn't happen. Everyone here will eventually quit because there's just no there's no casual content going on. You can't pug dungeons like maybe one dungeon group's pugging at a time. It's it's tough, but uh, I don't know. I wonder about the person who's never played WoW before leveling on the server, who finally sees a horde player and he's like, "What is that? <laughs> is this some kind of NPC event? What's going on here? Is this what is this weird creature?" It's, he's not moving like other creatures. It's really strange. Yeah, it's... Oh, well, well, whatever, whatever. We'll just have to see what happens. But, yeah, that will be in the notes. The next thing... Um, I'm hoping you can explain this as a tank to me, but they fixed Perry... Uh, they fixed Perry Hasting with Mother Shiraz and Alar? Yeah, so... Uh, I don't know if you remember. Sometimes uh mira especially no no offense mira uh would get like absolutely destroyed by alar um and i think that i mean apparently that it was unintended uh i from what this says it sounds like they're not supposed to parry haste at all which is is odd to begin with um but there was occasional times where they were like parry hasting and just murdering people like crazy so uh, they're just saying that it wasn't intended. I we never really noticed like any major issues with it before, other than like a, a random death here or there that I didn't think was even out of the normal. I was just like, oh, a lar hits hard sometimes. Okay, like, and they just got rid of parry hasting <laughs> on those bosses. Some Warcraft dev was like, wait a second, I just got killed because of a parry haste. Yeah, I'm going to nerf that that's anyway. The, I feel like <laughs> that's get the only that. I don't it's like the that. only explanation. And then note the note is like. This behavior was not true to reference. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> like, like that. That didn't feel good. We're getting rid of that. Exactly. They'll leave all the other <laughs> random nonsense that's in this game and not fix it, but mm, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. And then um they the uh they they still can continue to update the Blackwing Lair bosses. Um it'll be in the notes, but are any of these changes, anything, any of that stuck out to any of y'all. I don't didn't really see anything that stuck out to me, so I needed to mention it for the news. But if you guys have anything you wanted to say on any of the changes, it looks like they've done quite a bit to Neff, but I don't know. It's yeah, a lot I mean, to it's a lot to follow. They I mean, the they've done a lot. Having Rock and Flame Gore pull together is pretty cool, right? What? Yeah, you get to fight them both at the same time. The bosses. Interesting. Okay, I didn't. I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the so yeah. I've been rocking flame guard. You fight them at the same time now, which is cool. I think that those. Well, I don't. Blackwing way layer is like an insane dungeon to me to begin with. I was saying this the whole time, and I don't think I noticed until AQ. I was like, what are all these giant dragons doing in like tiny hallways <laughs> to begin with? This is such a weird layout of just like loot pinatas where it's like there's two dragons right next to each other in a room. Ah, just like fight them and some guilds like the speedrunning guilds would do them both at the same time until they took it off warcraft logs and stuff but it's like it's cool that they're just putting it together it is they're, they're like they're so similar <laughs> just back to back so it's cool uh it'll be interesting to see uh i don't know i, I want to see some hardcore people try this so we'll, we'll see <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I didn't realize there's new class calls for each class. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's what I that's what I saw in Neff. It looked like it was like the druids had these beams going. Like I'm gonna need to see these though before I can actually like. It's hard to like to like with it written up. It's hard for me to picture it in my head of what it's gonna look like. 
I think that for most of these, uh, it's going to just like spawn more movement abilities. Because when you kill Neff in uh, like normal Blackwing Lair, you everyone just like stands there and kills it. <laughs> but it sounds like there's more stuff that's like mages, like there's going to be like arcane explosions going out in places, there's going to be consecrates in places. People are going to have to like move around more, which I think makes that fight uh, quite a bit more interesting than how we were doing yeah. in actual vanilla. Yeah, definitely a way closer to a retail fight, I guess, like a yeah. normal retail fight. All right. And then the next thing is they're doing free tra free trans transfers on classic seas of mastery as well. We will post those in the notes if you want to see where you can go to because I guess there's a lot of dead servers there too. That I guess, you know, it's kind of the opposite of when they first released classic like they didn't have enough servers and then now it's like whoop might have made too many that, servers it makes sense for season of mastery and i i think i'm not gonna blame the hardcore community but with the big focus on hardcore i imagine that the assumption was that there'd probably be more like pve rating guilds going on on each server but i think that probably isn't the case so allowing people to transfer uh somewhere where they can get that experience like the normal the normal soft core players uh yeah they uh so I, yeah i mean it, it makes sense and I, I think with any any further seasons i'm sure will work the same way where I, the spike at the beginning will be bigger and then i think player drop off is just gonna happen every time i think it's hard to have three different versions versions of the game running at one time and expecting people to raid in all three of them or choose one to raid in and you're gonna go if you're a raider i just assume you're gonna go where the largest population is because I mean, no matter what you're rating, there are different versions of the game. They're going to be fun. And we just did Classic. I mean, I get yeah. their new raids and all that, but we just raided Classic. So we haven't seen Black Temple for 15 years. Let me just go see Black Temple right now. I mean, I, if I'll, maybe I'll go back and see what the Classic is later. But to me, I don't see... It, it's cool to see the end game stuff be redone, but like, it, it just feels like too soon already. Like, Just wait 15 years or something. I don't know. People will be excited about it then. Like, you got other things you can do with your time. Uh, TBC is coming out. I'm assuming Wrath at some point will come out. Um, yeah. Season of Mastery end game content's like asking for just too much too soon. Well, and it yeah. just seems like, yeah, we, we've talked about it many times, but we called it in the beginning. Like, I mean, if it went for hardcore, I wouldn't even have opened, I would have even installed uh, Season of Mastery. Like, it's way too soon for the people that did it, you know, and we're in TBC and then Wrath's coming, like would have made a lot more sense after Wrath to me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll just have to see what they continue doing. I think we've, we've expressed this a couple times where my concern is that they're going to get rid of some of these changes eventually because this is like the season of mastery. If they do a season of PvP next time and then they don't keep these changes, well, like, what if I'm ready to raid these updated, I want to raid updated Molten Core at some point in my life, but it's just like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm focused on TBC. We just did <laughs> Classic. I want to do TBC. I'm going to want to do Wrath. And then maybe at that point, I'll be like, I wonder what that uh, upgraded Blackwing Lair is like. <laughs> I'm kind of interested in that. But yeah, it, it's too hard to raid in, in multiple games. And even if you ever try to play two MMOs at once, this is how I felt playing Retail and Classic. It just felt like I'm, I'm playing two actual separate MMOs. That's like an a, enormous undertaking. <laughs> like who can uh, not many people can can find the time to do that when an when an MMO has like by definition just so much to do in it. Yeah, I mean and we're talking about the end game like I mean leveling like you can do that wherever I think but like yeah, the end game you've got so much stuff to keep straight and then also what I've been having problems with is the little changes from you know from classic to TBC classic, be like, oh wait, that doesn't work like this here. Shit. Okay, I forgot that. And it's a lot to keep straight at all times. And then I get on my characters and I'm like, oh my god, my bags are so full in TBC, and it's like I get anxiety because I was like, oh, I just have you know, eighteen slots in classic. <laughs> it's just it's all it's it's a lot, but there are people doing it, and there are you know. Who got the, uh, that's H, or W-H-O, who the guild got the first 
uh, Nefarian clear. So that mm-hmm. happened. So who? Who? Yep. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who's on first? Um, with well, the I, I'm confused about how quickly they did it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That is an insane. 47 minutes it says from the launch that's like faster than we were doing bwl at first like what was the clear uh, maybe like 40 minutes or like 30 like something like that with no updated mechanics well back in vanilla they had a ptr testing, world buff. Right? they had they had ptr for all these bosses right yeah 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 that does without world buffs is a little weird but at the same time you have to think about it they're all in uh in uh rank 14 gear oh yeah that's oh true. yeah that's right which is a big difference from the start of bwl last time around yep never mind it makes sense now <laughs> it all it, it's all coming <laughs> together <laughs> also i mean why why release ptr versions of these fights why if they're gonna update the fights why make ptr versions because once you clear them in the ptr i'd be like bored i'd be like i'm not gonna go i don't want to even do them on live i've killed them now i've seen them I see no reason they can't release them broken and overtuned. Like, who cares? I mean, maybe that's because I don't play it, but like, yeah, if you wanted to do it, too, right? As maybe a person not playing it. <laughs> yeah, but as like the season of mastery, it's like, I get, I mean, yeah, like, what's the point of practice if it's the season of mastery? I just think it's a little bit silly uh, to give them practice, especially when it is kind of like an experimental season you could get away with it more here like you release black temple with a bunch of bugs and it's over to him by accident i understand pushback you release season of mastery and nefarian's like impossible to kill and in a couple weeks you gotta like tune it down i mean retail that happens in retail a lot like that's just a, a thing that happens when you release these bosses so it, the season of mastery you're defeating the purpose giving them time to, to practice on the new mechanics but they also do rapidly change a lot of the mechanics so maybe they're thinking that oh you know we put in a few changes at the end not everyone's gonna know everything but 47 minutes i think for aq they gotta just push it through they gotta just turn it up <laughs> I, I i don't want people clearing this the first yeah, lock yeah i guess it's the awesome. gearing though too right the fact that you yeah. have the rank 14 gear already that what they'd have to do is make it like they'd have to increase the item level of the gear that drops to and then make the the fights harder to match the new item level, which then inflates the item level of the gear and Nax next, which is like AQ <laughs> yeah. and then Nax, and then you're like, okay, now we're just yeah. playing retail. But uh that, that's true. That that is true. But I would in a season of mastery, I just I would love to see it take longer than a single lockout. That I think is would be really interesting to see. Uh, something yeah. like very hard. But I'm just not in like I played the T B C beta and I'll play the Wrath beta. But like I'm just not into the PTR stuff. Like I, just like you said, I'd be bored of it by the time we got to it actual proper, and then it's just like okay. Guess How I'll do you guys feel again. about the difficulty of tier five versus the release of tier six now? Did you guys talk about this already? But the yeah, so that- tier five, it's so it's so finicky because I try I want to take a holistic view of the game where. I think that it being really hard made people quit. I think guilds being eight of ten in tier five, yeah, forever uh, was, a, was a was a big problem for like population or like people wanting to play the game. I thought it was cool. I felt awesome getting those bosses down when we did. I felt like the difficulty was like everything that I wanted. Like these bosses are hard. I need to learn these fights. It's not like vanilla tank and spanks. Like this is what I want out of a raid environment. He's yeah. like everyone. Everyone like needs to live and do their role on this fight, like for Vash and KT. Um, so that was really fun. And then I kind, in my mind, I kind of like that this gear is so, or like this phase is a little bit easier. Black Temple and High Jaw are, are simple. They're kind of like going to be loot farms in a, in a month. I think that's going to eventually be incredibly boring. But I also like that our guild's not going to break up because we can't kill the last boss. It's, so it's, it's, it's kind it's of. A, it's kind of a nice respite, you know, after really pushing on the other. It's, I'd rather have one. Yeah. I would rather have one of them be easy and one of them be hard. Be that would actually awesome. make me happier. But like, also the problem with tier, tier five, the biggest problem was that the best gear, the gear that you wanted the most for everybody dropped off the final boss at each of them. 
and that made it feel really bad for you didn't feel like you were progressing like before we got Vash and KT down we were disenchanting so much gear and it's just like you didn't feel like you were getting stronger week by week. And I think the gear was set up wrong throughout tier five. Yeah, tier six could definitely be harder. But from what I hear, Sunwell is very hard. In my mind, I'm considering this like a build up phase. There's a lot of guilds transferring right now. There's a, uh, I think a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like movement in guilds. This is sort of like figure out what we're doing for Sunwell, get our best group together. And then I'm excited for Sunwell progression. Um, but that sounds sad. And in, you know, two months after all this is on farm, I'm going to be like, why didn't they make this harder? This is, <laughs> this is like, <laughs> this is kind of crazy. We've been doing this. And the problem is Zolomon's going to come out, which means this phase of Black Temple is right. probably going to be even longer. Of bear having to do it. Yeah, but the bear runs will be cool. But uh, yeah, oh, I don't know. Oh. It just depends how long how all this. All I'm hoping is that the arena season pushes them to go faster with it. And that's all I could hope for. But, you know, at the same time, just like you said when we talked about it weeks ago, there's no reason they have to make them the same. So, you know, it might not, you know, it might not yeah. make it shorter. But I, yeah. I I, am hoping it's shorter. It is nice to just, like, go in and do it. But for me, I'm a different story, though. I only PvP'd in TBC. So this is all new for me and pretty exciting. Yeah. And... So I understand the people that, that did it back in the day, maybe wanting some more, but I mean, I'm rejuvenated into TBC after this phase released. And it could be just because we actually get gears warlocks now, but like at the same time, <laughs> I'm having a really good time. So yeah, it'll be fun to pump and like, we'll be able to, it, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be fun. I think people need to, if people need to raid log, people need to raid log. I think that's, that's what everyone needs to understand about, classic wow that's my my strong opinion on like not burning yourself out and there's nothing raids wrong with are it fun. raids are fun and burning out doing daily quests is like such a silly <laughs> thing to do to yourself if you're having fun raiding and stuff like that so uh for me i'm having a ton of fun with this because in vanilla which i raided every single week in vanilla all of that was like, incredibly easy. Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, AQ, all incredibly easy. We were clearing it like week one, and except we would for just go in and get our loot. Except for except, yeah, you're right. Uh, in AQ, very annoying uh, in AQ. Other Especially than, for Alliance, so many snappers for that. I was like, yeah, yeah, for uh, for Alliance and uh, yeah, that was very annoying. But it was like a consume fight. But then when Nax came out, I was like, all that effort of like easy stuff that we did. Now we're like putting it to work in the place that's hard that did take us like two months to clear. That was cool. And I'm going to I'm feeling the same way about Sunwell. Like it's like it, this still took us. This is technically the third lockout before we killed Illidan. I think that yeah, is as many like, war glaze as you possibly can. So people can. Yeah. Sunwell. Supposedly yeah, those are at a higher more. drop rate, too. I don't know. We people have to wait saying, a few weeks to see if that's actually crazy. true. People are so like. <laughs> everyone just jumps to conclusions like oh the drop rate's higher because all these guilds have war glaives and it's like or back in the day no one cleared black temple for two months <laughs> now everyone's clearing it from like yeah. week one like it's so hard to know uh so uh, we'll see but if, it, if they drop a lot fine i'm i don't war well, glaives are like i don't care about them so <laughs> you might you might care soon uh, uh snow me and zyrene talked about the possibility of warglaves ruining our arena like basically yeah, every if, road is, as warglaves in arena for the next you know that could be really horrible for all the other classes and that's the whole reason you roll rogue is to get warglaves for arena i feel like yeah, I mean, I think the easy solution, which most people would agree with other than rogues, I think that all we have to do is delete rogue from the game. I think it's not <laughs> a scary class. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to play with anyone who likes playing rogue. <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I they could always... Rogue, rogue always attracts a very... Sorry, Bob. The very, oh, no, you're fine. A very weird play... <laughs> There's very few rogues that I'm like, man, this is a good person. I really like talking to this person. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm a rogue. Every rogue I talk to, I'm like, I was a oh, rogue, yeah. vanilla, the last half of TBC, Wrath, and Cataclysm. I just, 
haven't been a rogue all of classic. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's because I, I wanted to lot. learn warrior and then. Oh, dude, <laughs> just messing. I'm a no, nice well, rogue. No, I had a, we had a rogue in our guild who would like in on Scarum. He would like go to Red Ridge and kill Lobies. And then he would post about it on the forums with his kill list for the day. He'd be like, this is all the names of the people I killed today in Red Ridge. And you're like, what? Yeah, I guess, I guess you're kind He's of like, right. There I'm are a lot the alliance. And you're like, there are a well, lot of rogue. What are you doing? dickhead rogues, I guess. You are right about that. I'm not, I'm not one of those. I'm one of these special, you know, special ones. But uh, yeah, you are kind of right about that. I just, I I just feel already. Rogues already ruined my arena experience. Like ninety percent of comps have a rogue in them. It's just like get these rogues out of here. Well, you have to turn invisible to play the game. <laughs> get out. Of That's all. All right, rogue ran over. Well, something to th- something to th- just throw on top of that is it's possible if it does cause a problems, glaives do see a arena change, just like. They were trying to change the, uh, the what's it called for mages? Not this season, I don't think. Though. No, no, they but it could change to where they're either the haste rating is just taken out of it, or possibly they're just not allowed in arena. I no can, way. I can, the I can, amount of uproar from the rogue people who rolled rogue just to PvP yeah. with Warglaze when it comes out. That's all I they mean, wanted. That's There's, what that's happened. That's the whole point of being a rogue in, in Burning Crusade. They took, uh, they took the trinket. What's it called? Yep, the mage gem from AQ, right? Yeah, or from uh, yeah. Blackwing Lair. Yeah, yeah, Black yeah. That, that's that's like old nonsense, though. That was like actually very broken. I don't yeah. know if strong weapons are the same as like <laughs> this makes your spells function. It was kinda, like it's kind of iconic. Of Burning Crusade is the word lives, and same with oh, Shadow Morn. Like Shadow Morns were just obnoxious in Wrath and apparently ruined the end game, the, the late game arenas with Shadow Morns. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they do anything, it won't be in this season just because anyone who gets glazed early will have some insane advantage. Like they can't just change it in the middle of the season. So, I mean, if anything happens, it'll be next season. Um, but yeah, the, the, the outrage that would come out of it is. Uh, I just Blizzard has not been making like any changes in classic that would spark like major outrage, I think. Uh and that would be <laughs> quite the outlier. Yeah. I was just I was just throwing it out there that possibly it's something that could really make stuff not fun. But the chances of me at my ratings running into a glaive rogue if he's down there with me, he's probably not very good, so it'd, it'd probably work out fine for me. <laughs> All right, well, let's move into discussion. And in this week's discussion, we are going to get to know Jamin a bit, and then he's going to tell us all about Noobcore and what it is. So first off, Jamin, Hello. we love to get to, like, nobody does this. So when we have a, a guest on for the first time, we like to actually get to know you, oh, aside wow. from the content creator. So, kind of give us your your WoW background. Like, when did you start? Way back when? How long did you play for? Did you play through retail? Like, give us your your WoW background. All right, I'll try to keep it brief because it has a lot of ups and downs. I'm sure everyone's you know story does. Uh, I this is in... your part. You take as long <laughs> as you want, sir. I started in Burning Crusade. Uh, the very beginning of Burning Crusade, I, during I was during the pre patch of Burning Crusade is when I made my first character. I made a a hunter on my brother's uh, account, played the level ten, and then I bought the game and I I got to uh, I made a mage named uh, Fire-er because I was going to be a fire mage, and obviously Fire-er is uh, I I don't know I can't tell you why I named him that, but that's he was a mage that was going to f- wield fire. Got him in Burning Crusade, got to level seventy eventually. Uh, and didn't like the auction house. Auction house scared me. So I uh, tried to make uh, spell strike gear and spell fire gear all on my own. Uh, and I was just farming uh, fire elementals all day because I was a. F- now, of course, I have to play as a frost mage because I can't farm fire elementals as a fire mage. So I just farm fire elementals all day, every day, just trying to get primal fires. And uh, I just got burned out doing it. I was so mad because I was making spell strike gear, spell fire gear, which doesn't help you be a better frost mage or help you farm fire elementals any better as a mage. 
So I was just, and I, I was scared of the auction house. So I didn't understand how it worked. I didn't know how to use it. I thought I was going to get like, I was going to, you know, put something up and someone would buy it and I'd lose it forever. I wouldn't lose my money. Um, so, uh, I eventually just made a shaman and, uh, I started leveling a shaman at some point cause I was just burned out on the mage and like waiting for, you know, spell fire cooldowns or, uh, cloth cooldowns. And, uh, I got to 70 and all of a sudden people just started inviting my shaman to raids for some unknown reason. I'm wearing greens. I was like, well, you guys, you don't want my shaman, my shaman, he's wearing greens. My mage has two purples. So that's pretty good. I got two purples on the mage. And they're like, uh, the mages come to, and they're like, hey, do you have wind fury totem? And I was like, I do got that button. And they're like, just, just hit that button. You're just, be, you're, you're good. Just hang out I was going to wait now. for you to like say, that. I was going to wait for you to say, well, they wanted me to do wind fury and bloodlust. And I was like, Oh, I didn't train those. <laughs> I was I waiting for you to no, say no, something yeah. like that. I was all of a sudden, I'm getting invited to black temple groups. I'm like, no, but I, my mage, I've been working on my mage for hours. I've been, I've been farming for, and they're like, eh, just bring the shamans. You got sh wind fury, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Just come on. Just come to the shaman. So I, I did, I did Terran Gore fiend. I did. I never killed Illidan back then, but I, I did up to Terran Gore fiend, at least is the one I remember the least and doing that. And, and that was really cool. Um, and then I was, uh, I didn't really do much, uh, in Sunwell or anything. Uh, I was resto all of a sudden I was, they were teaching me how to use, like, I remember being taught how to use a mana tide totem. They were like, no, when you hit 80% mana, drop your mana tide totem. Cause you can use it twice in one fight. And I was like, Oh, that's incredible. You've cooled down timing and you can like, Oh my God. Like Burning Crusade taught me all that kind of stuff. Uh, Wrath of Lich King comes out. I did Wrath with a raiding guild. I was elemental the entire time in Wrath. We cleared Ulduar. We did, uh, uh, we did, uh, all sorts of raiding in wrath. Uh, we, we did a heroic 10 mans mostly. Uh, and then we did a 25 man normals with the guild we were in. And, uh, uh, we actually ended up getting a uh, server first 25 man heroic Lich King kill, uh, on our, <laughs> but, and the caveat to this is we got it the first week of cataclysm. Uh, we got, uh, our server had not cleared, 25 man heroic glitch king wow. and we had been throwing ourselves at it for weeks and we were like oh we can't do it whatever all right let's level in cataclysm so we leveled in cataclysm and we were waiting for everyone to catch up so we had like 20 people that were ready to raid and we we're like well no one's raiding today well, why would you just go back and do 25 man heroic glitch king like okay and of course the server wide message goes out 25 man heroic glitch king the first server first 25 man heroic glitch king goes out going to uh we were on a dead dragon society was our guild uh, dds clears uh 25 minutes, we're getting whispers from people like oh my god oh our god our server oh my god and then uh cataclysm uh ended up quitting uh because the raids were just ridiculous and uh it was just a different time in my life i they were was getting rough tired of at the start much. dude yeah and i, I heard went, something I, I don't know yeah. if it's true hamster will said on one of his 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 videos i don't know if this is true but he said the 10 mans were tuned the same as 25 mans at the start yeah. of cata so they and tried I didn't to make it away from the itemization that came out of 10-man heroic was the same as 25-man heroic. And in order to do that, they made the 10-man heroics even more difficult than the 25-mans because you had less of a people that had to come in. So the 10-man heroics were more difficult because you only had to get 10 people to come together. In order to do that, they gave you the same item level as gear as the 25-man heroics. I but never the knew that. mans had like some of the tuning on them was like the same as 25-man. So certain mechanics would go that were impossible to handle with 25, 10 people and only 25 people could handle it. And so it was just ridiculous, especially for the guild I was in. We had a really good 10 man guild group. And, you know, even there was, you know, you could say clicky and stuff. I remember the second 10 man group we had was always mad at us for like, you guys are always doing heroics and you're clearing heroic, you know, Lich King 10 man. And we're, you're not coming down and helping our group out. Our, our, the B, the B raid is getting, you know, and then cataclysm comes out and you're trying to run like these 10 man heroics now. And they're just kicking our butt. And Dude, like, and that's what like okay. So I did ten. I did ten mans in Wrath. Start a Wrath and start a Cata mm -hmm. with real with real life friends. They they weren't good enough to be in Mel and my twenty five man guilds, but like we were we did fine in Wrath. And then Cata came out and they quit like super quick within the first month yeah. or two because it was absurdly hard and I couldn't figure out what we were doing wrong. I guess I never knew this ten man thing. I never knew this. Like yeah. when Hamster Will, I saw that on his, on his thing just like a couple of weeks ago, I was like, that makes so much sense now. But sorry, I, I didn't remember, mean to derail. No, no. I remember killing Cho'Gall 
and then quitting after that being like okay i'm done like i don't feel like i don't feel like doing that we didn't i think it was probably chogo on normal mode i'm guessing because i don't think we did sinestra which i think is the lady underneath them that we so we never actually went down there so i think we was on chogo on normal mode we cleared i remember taking my authenticator that i had on my account it was the old authenticator like a keychain one yep i, I had it, it. my mother and i said never give this back to me i'm never playing wow again if you Whoever holds this authenticator means I can't ever log in. Here it is, my authenticator. And she took it. And uh, and I just, yeah, I just stopped playing WoW for years. I missed all of the rest of Cataclysm. I missed all of Mist of Pandaria. Um, and I came back for Warlords of Draenor. I had to call Blizzard and be like, I lost my authenticator. Can you please uh, take it off my account? And they were like, okay. And they just took it off and it was fine. But uh, uh, I played Warlords of Draenor. I leveled up. I got into a raid guild in Warlords. And I did one raid in Warlords, and then I came back the next week, and they're like, hey, um, we just noticed that you didn't enchant your gear or gem your gear, and you should probably do that. Oh, by the way, the way I got into that guild is I linked them my first, my 25-man heroic Lich King kill. I was like, yeah, here's my nice. achievement. Uh, <laughs> my server first. Oh, my God. I was like, I was in a server first guild for 25-man Lich King, and they were like, oh, well, welcome. Come on in. I'm like, yeah, don't look at the date or anything that happened that in Cataclysm. So but funny. 100% that got me. And any guild I want to, I'm like, here, I got this. I was a really good raider back in the day. Here's my 25-man heroic Lich King achievement. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I, anyway, so they asked me, you know, like, hey, like you need to enchant your gear and, and all that. And I was like, you know, that's fair. That's true. I need to enchant my gear. But I don't feel like doing that. So I just quit playing WAD at that point. I was like, I, I really don't want to put that much time and effort into my character and figuring out all my enchants and going online and figuring out my best, all that stuff. I was like, I don't think I want to play this game. I just enjoyed the leveling experience a lot. It was fun. Uh, and then I came back for Legion. I met up with my old guild, the Dead Dragon Society. They were now named uh, Reasonable Expectations. And we did a Reasonable Expectations was the name of our guild. And we just did normal mode runs and it was like scaling difficulty. We cleared all the way through Nighthold and we killed Gul'dan. Uh, and that was really fun. I enjoyed that. And then I quit... I quit after Gul'dan because I didn't feel like doing Argus and uh, that. And then I came back, played BFA a little bit, barely anything. If I didn't raid at all in BFA. Uh, I just leveled up probably. And then, of course, you know, Classic came out, and I've been playing Classic ever since. Uh, Classic. I played Shadowlands. I got 9 out of 10 Shadowlands with uh, Denathrius. I never cleared Heroic Denathrius. I got to 9 out of 10. I was just pugging it, and I was running, I was running a pug every week in, in Shadowlands. And I, I got this group of people to 9 out of 10 Denathrius, and we were doing really close on heroic, clearing heroic Denathrius. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I did, if I was going to do that, I just need to get a guild, and I need to join up, and I need to, like, why am I running a pug every week and getting 9 out of 10 every week? And just, I was like, I'm done. I'm going back to Classic. So I went back to Classic, and uh, playing hardcore and Classic has been really fun. Um, I think Shadowlands was a lot of fun for the, I, I think it's true of every single expansion and every single uh, version of WoW the first couple weeks of any expansion of any uh, version of WoW, the leveling experience and the Priebus grind is the best part of World of Warcraft every time. Totally agree. And then once you get to the point where you're raiding, it's like, okay, my character is gearing up and getting extra power once in a while, but you get so many power spikes and such a, such a linear progression of power on your character as you level up and as you gain gear. And so I think that's why I like hardcore so much. I think that's why leveling is so much fun. It's just the power increase of your character is so noticeable as you level. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been just doing basically just classic ever since. I got I remember getting into the classic uh, uh, BlizzCon uh, thing where they let you make a level 15 character and run around the crossroads. And uh, it was incredible. It was like seeing a friend again. Like I put a searing totem down and it killed a plane strider with me. And I was just like, oh. Dude. Oh my god. Uh, so there he is. I was at I was at I was at I was at BlizzCon um when they announced Classic was coming out and I was doing Overwatch content at that point. I did a couple different Overwatch uh, podcasts, one on the Overwatch League and one on just Overwatch the game, kind of similar to this. But uh yeah, it like that popped on and I was like well, I'm gonna play that. Hell yeah! Because I was just, I was just like you. I actually quit in um, at the first month of the second phase of uh, of Cataclysm, and went to Star Wars: The Old Republic, and then eventually quit that too. But 
I never came back. I came back one time for the level 90 boost in like the Panda one. And I saw that they took away, they took away talents and I was like, I'm out. So <laughs> I, so I just didn't even play, but like, um, I don't know where, where was I going with that story? I don't know. Oh, oh. I don't know. So I thought that I wasn't going to get into classic. I thought I was just going to play it. I was like, maybe I'll play it like in the 40s. I'll get a, my mount and then quickly found out I'm sucked back in. So how did the, your trans, like, did you think you were going to like stream and play, you know, a ton of classic or did you just come back kind of for nostalgia? And did it suck you in? Um, I guess a little bit of both. I used to play uh heroes of the storm was my main game that I, I streamed for a long time i got master in heroes and i was trying to get grandmaster for a long time i never quite got grandmaster but i was i was in master league and i really enjoyed it it's like my favorite moba still to this day i think heroes is my favorite moba ever that yeah, has ever made league of legends nice. Nice. and uh dota are fun games but they have a lot of uh and i'm sure people that love those games would tell me i'm a noob and i'm trash for this but they the amount of complexity they have with their itemization and their characters and and the things you need to know to be able to play is just um I just don't find it enjoyable. I find the simplicity of heroes and the the to be its strength because within simplicity you can do some really creative things by by removing a bunch of complexity, you allow people to make choices that are actually uh strong and i don't mean to go off about heroes because i love it it's a great game yeah, i um, look, hold on i agree as yeah. not a, i didn't play high like i wasn't a competitive heroes player but on the low level the same thing you can play with anybody and you weren't you're not like gimped by the fact they don't have a second monitor with a guide up like in order to play league of legends you need like a guide that tells you the items you're gonna get what yeah. builds you need all the you're fighting the against what items you need to, to, put to in. counter that character yeah but heroes it's like anyone you could get together and as long as you were like familiar with the controls you can play it i was like this is like and it wasn't frustrating ever i loved heroes yeah i loved it because it it was more about teamwork and less about uh, like just getting a way, a huge advantage over your enemy and and uh, winning because you just had better gold farm. Like uh, at some point in Heroes, it was about like winning team engagements and being better as a group and dick calling out things and explaining, knowing timings and rotations and understanding objective timings and and spawn timings of of and having a the only problem, biggest problems with Heroes was that it was like a and I'm going off about Heroes still, but uh. Uh, it was that it was a uh, it, it could be lost in the draft and like some characters it was very difficult to counter them if you you know got messed up in the draft and you uh your team drafted poorly and you're just sitting there like oh we can't even do anything because this guy's we're screwed um which is something that itemization fixes in league and that by being able to change the things you're buying that's change the way your character can be built sometimes you can fix the draft in league by buying items like percent health items or a, a spell gear, something to remove or give you armor because the enemy team has a lot of physical damage dealers or the enemy team has a lot of magic dealers having magic defense and all that. So I, I like heroes because of the simplicity and the teamwork aspect of it. I forgot why we're talking about this, but um, I had a, uh, did, did you ever listen to any heroes of the storm oh, pod, uh, right. podcast? Did I ever listen to heroes of the storm podcast? Yeah. Well, I, no, I didn't. Uh, my friends did one, and I'm blanking on the name now. They're part of the Zord Network. Oh well, sorry. Yeah, Talkers uh, of the Storm. Oh yeah, I forgot two two other big things about me that I meant to mention in my big rant about who I am. We did a podcast way back in the day during uh, the end of uh, uh, Wrath of the Lich King called Casticlism. We did a Casticlism podcast and uh, did really well. We were it was really great, and then. Uh, my cousin, my brother, and I did that podcast, and then my brother got a job, a night job, at a, a company that he needed to work really hard at. So his schedule de-aligned, and he was the one who knew how to set up the everything about podcasts. And I had no idea. I was like, I just showed up and read. I was the guy. I knew how to kill. You know, do do. I was the PVE guy, and they were the PVP guys, and the guy who knew how to do the podcast. So we had that podcast, and then um. And then I got Realm First level eighty five shaman. I feel like I, ne I never mentioned that. Uh oh wow, that was fun. Getting getting Realm wow. First eighty five shaman and Cataclysm was a lot of fun. You have um, a bizarre story of 
Yeah, uh, Rome first, 85. Didn't want to enchant in Wad. Run a pug in Shadowlands. That's 9 of 10 heroic castle. Yeah. Nathier. Those are very opposite, like, play styles, I guess. Yeah, it was. it's very much, uh, I don't know, I guess I guess it's it's a lot of um, uh, flowing down the, the, the path, the channel that the path is already there for, whatever the easiest path was. It was like, oh, this yeah. seems simple. Okay, let's do that. As opposed to, like... Not a lot. I guess not a lot of forethought. Is uh, is is uh, a? <laughs> am I having therapy right now? Hold on. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, uh, classic. Why I started playing classic again was again like I we had been doing the podcast and we had done that and I remember loving it and just enjoying talking to people and having people would call in and say like, hey, this is what I did this week and this was a lot of fun and we would banter about it and and talk about like, Oh, look who called in again. And we had like, you know, a phone line and everything. And then we had, you know, we had ads, we had guests on, it was a lot of fun. It was all of a sudden people. And I still have people that come into my stream to this day. that are like, are you Jamin from that podcast? I'm like, yeah, that was like 12 years ago. You remember that? And he goes, I used awesome. to listen to your podcast every day on the way to school. I, my middle school, I put my earbuds in, I'd listen to your podcast. And I was like, well, that's really cool. It's incredible. I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine that. I have no idea why, why you would do that but thank you very much for listening to that and um so yeah i remember doing that and i was like i do like wow and i know a lot about wow and so uh, i just started streaming it again and um it's been good i i, I do have a podcast as well called jamin cast but i don't post any episodes because i just kind of do it on a whim when i'm like oh i want to talk to that person more and i want to know them so i'll just say come on let's do a podcast episode and we'll throw it together and yeah i was just out. about to i was just about to bring bring that up i've I I I listened to all of your shows and then they just kind of stopped and I didn't know if you know you just didn't feel like keeping it going or what had happened but yeah I I'm yeah, it still was, it was sub more to that it. like other things had taken my interest and in, and the podcast is a lot of fun to do and I enjoy talking to people and um I tell I'm told like every day like you have a great voice for Buggy and I'm like okay all right I got it yeah thank you <laughs> you do you I do yeah and uh but. It, uh, when you're in a drive-through, it's not very fun to be told that, like, "Wow, you have a really great voice for radio," and you're like, "Well, thanks, thanks. Here's your, uh, here's your, here's your coffee. You enjoy, have a good one." <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's 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 a uh, it's been a a fun time streaming classic and hardcore has breathed like a whole new life into the idea of it and and having fun with it and enjoying it. So, here is where I started streaming, but World of Warcraft is where I, people started finally watching me really. Uh, and uh, it's been it's been really it's been really nice and enjoyable and and then of course you know uh it's just been a it's just constantly trying to be uh iterative and and create something fun to watch and enjoyable to participate in and that's new and interesting and not the same old same old every time and it's funny to you say that with hardcore because hardcore is that right hardcore is playing the same things we've already seen how do you make that fresh and spicy and and interesting and and uh so that's that's the constant challenge it's, it's it is it's fun it's just a fun challenge to do everyone wants to see you die because it's like nascar races you're like oh i'm here for the for the competition and you're like no i want to see a car crash like that's really what you're here for um, oh yeah oh yeah yeah the uh it's been it's been good i mean that's why like ragnaros the road to rag it was just constantly you watch the chat they're like well, why is anyone dead yet ah! Like people are just waiting for it. Like, why are they being so careful? Like, it's like they only have one life or something. Ah, come on, die already. And uh, but yeah, it's been it's been good. So I just kept going. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's a, basically my history with WoW and streaming and and why I do why I've been doing what I do. Awesome, awesome. Well, that brings us into the the next challenge. You came up with something interest interesting and. I didn't even know this was possible mm -hmm. to go into a five man dungeon as a ten man raid. I knew it was yeah. in like Scarlet Monastery, but like you didn't get it, you didn't get good experience. But for some reason, the start of Classic, I guess it was broken. You got the right. you got the full EXP, but I guess like I thought they you just turned it right. off, but they didn't. Like you could still go into almost every five man with 10 people. And so you had an idea. So why don't you explain to us what noob core is? Sure. So the current iteration of noob core, and it's, it's, it's definitely iterated over the years has been that it is a 10 man raid group going into a dungeon and attempting to go at the lowest level possible that we think is possible. Right. So like the physical possible, like 
Ragefire Chasm, the lowest level you can actually enter the dungeon is level eight. And so we cleared RFC at level eight with hardcore characters. And uh, we moved on to Dead Mines. And I think the lowest level you're able to enter Dead Mines is 10. But we just didn't think it would be possible to kill Van Cleef at level 10. So yeah, because he's at, like level 21, level right? 11. He's uh, 20, 20 or 21? I, th- I, I thought he was 21. Yeah. I, I think he's 21. I think you're right. Because uh, we went in at 15 before because we were going. We used to go in at six levels below the final boss. So originally what happened is um, with the launch of Classic, I heard about all these people running dungeons with 10 people. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. Like, even though the experience is nerfed and it's not good, it's still kind of cool to bring 10 people to a dungeon. So I figured, like, oh, that'd be kind of a fun thing for a community to do, a community, a stream community. Let's go do 10-man dungeons as a stream community. Like, let's come on, guys. Let's go try it out, see what happens. Let's just have some fun as a community and do it. So we went into RFC, uh, and we started this noob core thing, and we went in at level 10. And I remember talking in trade chat, trying to find more players to join me, and people, it was like the day after it had been nerfed. Like the, it was like very, very early in classic and people were whispering me like, it doesn't work anymore. There's no point in doing 10 man RFC anymore. Like it's, it's nerfed. Don't do it. They don't just get didn't get doing it. it. And I was like, guys, no, it's just, it's just fun. Like I'm just trying to have fun right now. We're just going into a dungeon for fun just to see what would happen if we went in at 10. I don't um, understand. <laughs> and yeah, the whispers I was getting was constant. So we ended up clearing every dungeon in the game. Uh, up to lower Black Rock Spire, six levels below the final boss. So we got to, you know, we did every single one uh, with just a normal dungeon group. Uh, I think Maradon was probably the craziest one because I ended up having to solo Princess for a 30-minute fight because everybody else died because she just murdered her whole team. But I was a hunter with Aspect of the Cheetah, so I was able to just run away from her and just auto-shot her for 30 minutes running around her little pool. And uh, she finally died, and it was I was like, oh, it's crazy, it's crazy, fun. But um, at some point, we cleared all the way through Lower Black Rock Spire, and I was like, ah, oh, finally, like Noobcore, like we finished it, we did it all, we completed the challenge. And then someone's like, let's go again, and I was like, oh, again, like we just did this, we just finished Noobcore, we don't have to go again. And I was doing the hardcore challenge the whole time on the side, and I was like, you know what, guys, here's a, here's a challenge. We're going to do Noobcore, but we're going to do it with Hardcore this time. We're going to go with, if we die, we'll delete the characters. And I was like, finally, I found a way out. We're going to, I'm going to put Hardcore on the, on the thing. We're going to put Hardcore on the, on the, the, as part of the rule set. And now I'll never have to do this again. We'll go in, we'll die. And we'll just, we'll, we'll never have to play this mode again. Cause I'm, it, it'll be, but it turns out it made it way more fun <laughs> and it became way more addictive. And we became like, it just became like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. And we ended up doing all the way through Scarlet Monastery Armory. Uh, and it was the day before Burning Crusade release. We got to the Scarlet Monastery Armory and we killed Herod at level 31. So we did we did library at 31. And then we realized like, oh, it's the last day before Burning Crusade. We're probably not going to be doing this for a couple weeks or maybe a couple months now because people are going to want to level TBC characters. And this is kind of like a fun thing to do on the side. It's not really a main raid. People have obligations to their their main characters. So let's just go crazy. Let's go straight into Armory at 31. And we ended up clearing Armory at 31, but only two people survived on Herod. We had two people that was the final, you know, everybody died except for two hunters and a warrior. And they killed Herod by shooting him with guns. Like the warrior was just pulling his gun out, like trying to shoot him. They're jumping off the hill. Herod's sprinting around, yelling blades of light. It was awesome. And uh, then the, uh, of course, the Scarlet uh, uh, Cadets spawn or whatever they're called as soon as Herod dies and they start running in. And I had uh, another streamer, Winky, was on and he says, he says, everybody hearth, hearth, quick, hearth, get the hell out of here. And uh, he starts hearthing, the other hunter starts hearthing, and the warrior's like, oh, hearth. And he like has to find hearth in his bags, clicks the hearthstone. Of course, the mobs reach him before they reach the Winky and the other hunter. The two hunters are out of there. They live. The warrior goes down dying and he's just like, oh, you left me. And like, you know, and we only have two characters left. So it's just like, just crazy. These moments of like, it's an enjoyable thing. Like this, this, uh, the, like, people are like, oh, it's like a challenge to do it, but it's also just the memories of doing these dungeons. And I'm gaining like completely new senses of moments of like, I remember in this dungeon, I did this, this, and this, which you don't get a sense of very often. And wow, unless you're raiding, like you guys talk about it every week, 
you come in here and you talk about like what we did this week. And we're like, oh, did you hear it? And then he got killed by the, he got two shot by that part. And that, we had this ability to go off at the same time as this. And it's that same feeling, but we're at low levels and we're just like raiding dungeons and having fun and it's enjoyable. So it's, it's been really cool. And I, and I've started having people reaching out saying, can I make my own? Are you okay if I make my own team and like do this on my stream? If is it okay if, if, we'd go and you're not there. And I'm like, yeah, that's totally, yeah. Just have fun. Just enjoy the, enjoy the idea. Like just go enjoy playing this idea. It'd be, it'd be amazing to me if someone made another care, another attempt. Um, and then of course, anyone who wants to join is more than welcome to join us at any time. We run every single week. We do a dungeon on Fridays and uh, we're just attempting every time. So like we did RFC at eight, we did dead mines this time at 12 and we cleared dead mine. So Two weeks ago, we did dead mines at 11. We died on Sneed, or I died specifically on Sneed. I was tanking as a shaman on Sneed. And uh, and then they 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 killed Sneed, but nobody else died. And they were like, well, let's not keep going because we're not going to be able to clear. So we went back in at 12 the next week, and we cleared it completely. We did the entire dungeon. We killed Van Cleef at 12, and it was just like this amazing, like incredible like rush of like, did we actually do that? Like, that's possible? Like, you can kill... Van Cleef in hardcore at 12. Uh, it's, it's been really, really cool. Um, that is, so that now is we're going awesome. to SFK this week at 17. We're going to try to kill Arugula, who is, I think he's level 26. We're going to try to kill him at 6, 17. And uh, there's a lot of problems with the dungeons that happens when you go in at such a low level. There's a lot of things that you don't generally think about. And aggro range is one of them. And in SFK, that's a real problem. Uh, especially when you're level 17 underneath there's a, there's an area in SFK where it wraps around and there's a worgen walks right over top of you on a bridge. And normally you're fine walking underneath them. But when you're 17, there's a pack of mobs that sit on top of a little stone area right on that spot that you literally cannot walk around to pull the next trash pack because it will pull the entire room and they'll pull the everything. Uh, and we've done it multiple times. We have to run out. So this week we have a rogue. Like we prep like the idea, okay, we're gonna have a rogue. He's going to stealth around that corner. He's going to pull the next trash back and then jump down so that we can actually pull the next trash back. We literally need a stealth rogue to be able to do it. Like, you know, so, so some of the problem solving, uh, again, I said, I'm tanking on a shaman. And that's very specifically because I'm using a fishing pole because we're fighting mobs that are nine levels higher than us. And we need to be able to generate threat and shamans generate an enormous amount of threat at low levels with rock biter or shock. And uh, a fishing pole allows you to actually strike these mobs. And it's actually like people come in and they're like, is he, why is he, why is your tank using a fishing pole? It makes no sense. But it honestly is the best DPS threat generation you can get in the game at that level uh, when you're fighting mobs that are nine levels higher than you. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, it's a lot of fun. And so, yeah, that's, that's Noobcore in a nutshell. Uh, what it is, it's just a, a new way to play the game. It's hardcore but with an idea of let's go raiding at level, you know, let's go raiding at level eight and see if we can clear RFC. And I challenge you, if you guys think you can clear RFC at level eight, please do it. If you think you can clear, actually, if you think you can clear dead mines at lower than level 12 with hardcore, I want to see it. Like that would be amazing. I would be like, Oh, they did what? Oh, they did. Oh, they were using target dummies. Oh, like that. Oh, so smart. That's a genius move. Like, so target dummies as a horde getting target dummies at level 12 is so difficult because the only place to farm wool is to go to Elwyn and kill sheep and skin them. So you're a horde player at level 12 in Elwyn Forest trying to kill sheep and skin them to be able to make target dummies so that you can bring it to the raid to be able to, like, it's just been, it's been nuts. And so you're twinking your characters out. You're doing leatherworking and skinning and I'll, I'll level leatherworking and skinning, make a bunch of gear, drop both professions, pick up herbalism and alchemy, make a bunch of alchemy potions, elixirs, drop both professions, level up engineering and mining, make the goggles for engineering, make target dummies, and then go to raid. And I have enough elixirs. I have enough. I made it my, you know, I made my armor kits for my gear. I've got gear I made. It all says made by me. Cause it's again, it's hardcore. It's solo self found. We're not trading anything in these dungeons. We're doing everything by the hardcore rule set. We're just showing up with 10 people. So hardcore it's- makes it like much cooler because yeah, it, of course you could probably do it if you could just go over and over again and be like, okay, this time we're going to pull it to here. We're going to do this. But hardcore yeah. makes it really exciting. I, uh, we, af- like, af- after the show last week, we raided Apricot 
Ipa Kit Kat. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was so nervous in there. Like, she was in your your run, and she was like, uh, <laughs> you know, because yeah. that's, that's what hardcore does. Yeah, just, just trying to, I mean, I just heard the clip of her after we killed Dead Minds uh, or Van Cleef, where she was just like, that was so much fun, she said, and she laughed. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad. Like, that just, like, to me was, like, a really nice moment to see someone who just genuinely enjoyed this. Like, I mean, I didn't make wow. I didn't obviously, but like this idea of like, let's do hardcore raids at low levels and see how far, what's the extreme level we can push it at. And I'm sure we could do it at level 11 or maybe even level 10. If you had like a really, really dedicated group of people that really wanted to put in hours and hours of fishing up the one ring, everybody fishes up the one ring. That'd be insane. Like, of course, maybe you could do it. But um, my uh, uh, the, the Mel, we had and everything. It was it was a lot of fun and seeing someone smile and laugh and say that was fun. After that was just like uh, it made me feel really good. So I'm I'm excited for the future of this and of course I'm excited to see anybody who wants to join us is more than welcome to join. Every week we're running these. So and it sounds like we're gonna have more than one a week at some point here soon if we can uh, if we get enough people. And so uh, it'll be it's 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 been a lot of fun. Does this require a shaman? for tanking or do you think this i think if you did alliance you wouldn't need a shaman because at some point you could do a dungeons with uh you could have salve you could have salvation mm-hmm. and so you'd have enough threat on the warrior or druid to be able to actually generate threat but at the moment uh on the horde side at least you just can't generate enough threat to keep uh threat off the healers because the healers have to pump the tank with heals like yeah. they cannot stop because you're getting crushing blowed every attack like sneed crushing blowed me i think he was doing 200 damage every every auto attack was 200 damage and i only have like a 500 health pull at that at level so he's hitting me for you know three hits he'll kill me so i have to have the healers just dumping mana on me luckily some of these characters are cc-able like sneed slowable so we had concussive shots going out we had earth binds going out um and then you know some of these have there's terrain uh you can do terrain bugs on some of these like van cleef you can jump off the ship onto the lower deck and he has to run all the way back around to get to you. Uh, and Shaman just generates an insane amount of threat at this level relative to every other tank. Like, Warriors glancing blow constantly. You don't get any rage. As soon as you lose uh, uh, threat on the target, then the target's not giving you rage by hitting you, and so you're now... The healers have to pump you with health, and you can't out-threat the healer healing. Like, DPS can just not... Like, DPS can sit and do nothing and let you establish threat, but healers still have to heal you. So... The, he- the healers losing losing threat to a healer has been has been the the hardest part of the run. But now as we're getting higher in levels, we start getting to the talents that reduce threat from heals. They're pretty nice. I think a, a, a paladin on an alliance side would be really really nice, just giving everyone salvation so that well, the tank about, can actually do his job. What about a paladin tanking with a with a pull? With a yeah, f- it'd be it'd be okay. It'd be, it'd be fine. You couldn't Maybe. you wouldn't have any block obviously. Um, be good though. You have male gear at the very early levels. Uh, Fishing pole is really good. Um, uh, at level 20 or level 30, you get the new pole. It's the big iron pole, but you have to go out to the uh, desolus to go swim around in the crab traps and pick up the crab traps until you get it. Uh, it's just, it's right next to the horde village too. So I don't know. Do you get that the, is to do. do you get the plus five pole? Do you get the one yeah, that the, like the, the strong? So you start off with the fishing pole. Once you get to, I think 10 fishing, you can go buy the, the, the strong fishing pole. And the strong fishing pole is your pole you're going to use all the way till your level 30. And then at 30, you get the big iron pole from the from the traps out in uh, Desolus. And then for Horde only, at 44, you can get the Nat Pagler's Extreme Angler FC 5000. And that will give you 38 DPS all the way until your level 60. Uh, for Burning Crusade, you can't actually put Rockbiter on your fishing pole anymore. They don't allow you to imbue fishing poles with uh, with shaman enchants or shaman imbues anymore so a paladin would probably be the only one that could do it but the fishing pole the amount of dps that the 38.8 dps fishing pole does versus the best blue you can get while leveling like the maradon blues is like the best blues like 47 dps it's a very close in dps only like 10 dps off uh and the fishing pole you get in outland is like i think it's like i want to say it's like 70 dps but the the items you get the 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 first the two handers you have when you're finishing you know from like ring of blood or something 
is what that's like 90 or 100 dps I, I don't remember exactly what they are i can't remember the numbers but the the like if you look at the fraction of it right the amount of damage you get actually from the 38.8 dps pull is pretty damn good relative to the best gear you can have when you're hitting level 60 uh while the fishing pole you get out of outlands is pretty crappy relative to the damage you get out of a weapon from just leveling in, in outlands so it doesn't work quite as well in burning crusade uh but a paladin would probably be the best one it's crazy. So what's the uh what's the future? Like you just gonna keep going to the next thing and the I just wanna keep die, uh, catch we're, up? we're just gonna keep trying to clear each dungeon. And then uh, the idea is to make it to the point where it's enough of a if a, a big enough community forms around it that people can make their own choices. Like the dream is that I'd have people running their own raids and saying, Yo, we cleared it at this level, here's the VOD. Here's our clips. This is how we handled this problem. And like, you just like have a, a community of people that are challenging themselves. We did it with five people. Oh, we did dead mines at level 10 with five people. What? How? What? How? Is that is he possible? I don't yeah, know. If that's once, possible. once you put out the challenge to, to beat you, I've already been like, all right, how, like, first of all, I don't play hordes. So that's uh, a, yeah. we're already, <laughs> we're already running into a problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. uh, hey, that to me says no one has done it at level 11 alliance right no one's right <laughs> so exactly yeah i don't know gotta what get our guild is. together you only need 10 people hey we got 25 people in our tbc right let's hop over to classic guys and i'll just say time. after doing hardcore i can get level 11 or 12 in just yeah. a couple hours like, i also yeah. really i really like the other parts of the game a lot as well too so i feel like be being level 11 going out there skinning sheep like i'm down for that i'm down to level my professions and get all these like little advantages and yeah. it's like, I don't have to hit 60. This is more <laughs> reasonable of a challenge. And we'll just send it right into dead mines and see what happens. Yeah, I've had, I've had people, you know, and hunters are the best DPS at this level. So if you ever are wondering what DPS to bring, it's a hunter because hunters just don't have glancing blows and they just do consistent damage. They have pets. They have their, their damage doesn't have glancing blows with it. They don't get, you know, dodged. Um, they just miss where they hit. That's like the only options. They either miss or hit or crit, but, you know, you're pretty low level. Um, and so the war, uh, hunters do the best DPS. Um, there's just a lot of little things about it. And like, at one point we did it like, okay, we're going to do noob core with no hunters. Like let's do, so we did it at 15 with no hunters. And that was crazy fun trying to do that because hunters just completely dominate the DPS meters. And then we're like, okay, well, if we bring hunters, what can we do to make it more difficult? Let's drop the levels down. So the idea is just keep dropping the levels, just keep going lower. At what point is this impossible? I don't know. Um, and so it's been fun to just, yeah, challenge people to, to push out as, as hard as they can to, uh, to get through these, uh, these ideas, this, these dungeons. And so we're going to SFK tonight. And then if we clear SFK, we could do BFD at some point. I'm not sure. Um, but we, we skipped Wailing Caverns cause honestly, Wailing Caverns is just a boring, it's a boring dungeon. It's, uh, the only fun part of it's Verdan the Everliving and the, and Mutinous the Devour. And, uh, the rest of it is just killing night elves and, and and raptors and slimes and it's like okay i got them done i don't really care this is boring or super long super boring and you can't even fall off anymore like talk about classic wow not being classic you can't fall off of wailing caverns into the the through the hole you, you even if you don't jump you just walk right off that little ledge and for anyone who's never played back in the day there's a ledge in wailing caverns that used to be able to just walk right off of it and you would fall off and it was like the noob check you'd be like who's never been here before this guy, he didn't jump. You have to jump at the edge of this cliff to get to the next one to be able to get to the final, one of the bosses. And uh, now there's a little pixel, like there's a little ledge they added in retail at some point, like a little, you know, extra six inches of, of cliff. So now you can just walk right off of it instead of having to jump. Uh, and cool. then I remember just coming into Classic and being like, why, wait, can I just walk off this? Like, this isn't Classic. Hashtag I, changes, man. I, I remember that it. all the time, but I remember maybe it was because I played a night elf, but the real noob check in vanilla for us was uh Black Fathom Deeps, the hopping on the little like, oh, yeah. like right at the beginning. Right. <laughs> yeah, someone yeah. who's always like again and again and again. And it's like, ah, get on up. I'm trying to do 360 spins while I'm doing that just yeah. to show off. And then you mess up and you're like, oh, okay, all right, sorry guys, I gotta swim back. <laughs> My bad. And you know there's a way to get around it, right? You just walk on the wall. You just walk right on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's like, we didn't know that back in the day. I know. It feels so dumb. And I'm like, oh, oh all that all that work. <laughs> all, all that time we would sit there waiting for one person to come. And you'd be making like, come on, man, you can make it. And then you realize you could have just like, let's just walk along this wall here. It, it totally, you just walk 
you don't need to jump anywhere but okay we did it we did we tried our best back then that's <laughs> yeah and we'll have uh we'll have all the links to jama's discord his twitch and everything in the notes in this section so make sure to check that out is there anything else you wanted to cover before we're gonna wrap it uh, up so yeah, the uh the noob core there's a sign up channel in the, in my discord and if you're gonna link to it I'd be, I'd, i appreciate that the there's a sign up channel there's a rules channel with uh a list of every single dungeon we've cleared and what level we cleared it at and what version of the game we were on um, for the hardcore challenge. And uh, so, of course, anyone who wants to join in can. Uh, we're always, every week we're trying a different one. We're talking in there constantly. People are like, oh, I, I fished here and this is where I fished and I this is where I got this recipe. And oh, like the, the whole idea of getting wool cloth. We're like, oh, dude, target dummies. We can't get wool cloth. How do we get wool cloth? So it was like, you can skin sheep. We're like, we can't go to Elwyn. Some guys like, here, I did a video real quick. I, this is how you get to Elwyn as a horde player without dying. And you know, you know, I'll follow his route. And like, okay, now we're, so it's a whole community of people like making these, like, like not everybody twinks out like crazy. I have a guy who comes in there. He's still wearing his, uh, his woolies and he shows up every week and he's just wearing the, I think that's all he's wearing is the, is the woolies that give his, make his look. He's wearing underwear and he's shooting his bow. So not everybody is, you know, a super uh, crazy pumper just because how strong hunters are. You really don't even need gear to do damage as a hunter at that low level. Um, just bring a bow and, and arrows and you're good to go. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's been it's been fun. So anyone who can join in, just jump in on the Discord, say hello. People are more than happy to talk. And then there's a um, there's a sign up page every week. And if as we get larger, as more people show up, as more people get interested, uh, we'll talk about a second raid. And getting you know getting other people signed up so we can you know see what other people do and and how it goes. Nice, nice. All right. Well, I just thought it was cool and thought that we we needed to have you on. I can't believe I didn't know about it for so long. Like I didn't know about this whole thing, and you've been doing it since the start. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's just been a you know it's been iterative. It's been different. We we did a uh, a we did a a challenge once a long time ago. Me and Graves for Days did a race in RFC at level ten. We said, okay, we're both bringing raids in. Let's see who who uh who gets into RFC, who clears RFC at level ten faster. Which one of our raids, you know, ch- call out to my community. Let's go, man, my community versus your community. Let's see who wins. And of course, we won. I want I don't want to rub that in too much, but uh, of course, uh, my team won. Uh, and then. Uh, it's been, it's been ever since then, it's just been fun, you know, like, uh, different moments all, all along, uh, just, it's been iterative. It's not been hardcore every time it's been changing, but the idea is just low level rating, man, just bringing people having fun and just trying weird things. And, and because again, like you guys said, so at low levels, I can do that. I can level a character to 17 in a day. Like that doesn't take too long, especially with season of mastery, a hundred percent experience bonus on quest now. It's not, yeah, I can do that. No, sure, let me try. Let me, I want to try this. Let me let me jump in and try it out. And then if we wipe, we have the option now with Season of Mastery. Okay, let's take a, two, a week break, and in two weeks we'll come back to the same dungeon and try it again. Well, before we were kept, we kept restarting because every time we wiped, we'd be like, okay, let's just restart and do it again. Let's try it again, and we'll do RFC at this. We'll just change up the rule this way. Let's try a different faction. Let's do. And so every time it's been a little different. But now I think I think we will clear every dungeon eventually now especially with the season of mastery 100% experience bonus allowing us to either not if not the exactly the same time next week at least in 2 weeks we can level our characters up very quickly to get them ready for those dungeons even at, as we get closer to 40s and 50s and Uldaman and and dead uh not dead mines Uldaman and Maradon and and Zulfarak and those will be really fun those were those were a blast to do um in a uh normal mode a hardcore zulfarak where you're you know fighting waves and waves of zombies sounds terrifying so we'll see yeah yeah it definitely does dude moradon sounds terrifying like zulfarak's one thing but doing moradon in hardcore it puts it puts some hair on your chest like it's, <laughs> it was rough all right well that's that is that is going to do it for this for this week on discussion. Um, I do want to do the add on of the week. So the add on of the week this week is really good for hardcore, but uh, is probably really good for TBC or whatever. Like it's basically 
Recipe Radar. It is basically just a thing that glows on your your the the button on your mini map glows when you don't have something that's in that zone. You click on it. You can set it to whatever professions you are. You can set it to like notify you, and it just tells you what recipes you can get in that zone. It was huge for me in hardcore because you know cooking recipes are all over the place. Oftentimes they're, you know, they're on a thing where you can only buy a certain um, amount of them during a certain amount of time, and Googling all of that shit is not fun. So this just puts it all in a nice tight package, and it's a really good mod. Have you guys used this mod? No, no never Bob, heard of that. I, I play the game. I don't rely on add-on. <laughs> uh, no, it looks really cool, especially for hardcore. Uh, I have not used it, but I spent a lot of time on Wowhead looking up recipe locations. So <laughs> that uh, I can see yeah. the value. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, f I found out about it from chat. I'm telling you, man, chat like is unbelievably nice for, like streaming is just a cheat. To to yeah, be honest, code for you. Yeah, Hacks. it really it really is. Like I I can't believe how much stuff I've learned. And you know, and I've got a small chat. I can't even imagine if you had a big chat. Like it would be just nuts. Like so, sh you know, shout out to chat basically. All right, yeah. <laughs> well, that's gonna bring us into closing. Um, I just would like everybody to re remember to follow us on Twitter at WC Reloaded. You can follow the Mash Those Buttons Network at the Mash Network. If you want to send us your wow stories or something longer than you can send over Twitter, do so by sending e emails to wcrpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to join the Mash dis Discord, you can do so by going to mash.gg slash discord. How can you help the show? Well, the best way to help the show is to tell your friends, post it in your guild Discord, yell it out at Walmart. Like, that's the best way. But if you want to go above and beyond, you can leave a, rev a review on either I iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or um, warcraftradio.com slash directory. And as long as it's five stars, we always read it on the show. So, if you want Yip to read something funny, do or it. Or heinous, like I said. I mean, as long as it's not a crime to read it out loud. And he, honestly, even if it is, we might. So, you know, give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll, well, you're you're not going to be able to get, like, something horrible through on, I, on iTunes. You're going to have to be a little cheeky and fun with it, but, you know. Yeah, just capitalize all the letters that spell out the heinous part, and then we'll... <laughs> we'll decode your message right right in a code email us the decryption for it and then we'll read your real <laughs> message on uh, on stream above and beyond all right yeah but help us out guys we uh we didn't have any new reviews this week and they definitely help us get seen uh through google searches and things of that nature so do us a solid love you guys and keep it up all right Yep, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube at The Yip Show. Awesome, awesome. And Jamin, uh, just every place we can find you, we'll also, in, we'll also include links in the show notes, but tell uh -huh. us where we can find you. Sure. Uh, Twitch is my main hangout, uh, twitch.tv slash Jamin. It's J-H-A-M-A-N, just like Shaman with a J. Uh, my YouTube is Jamin the Shaman. And then my Twitter is also Jamin the Shaman. Awesome, awesome. And you can find me on Twitter at Blazin underscore Bob. That's B-L-A-Z-Z-I-N underscore B-O-B. -B. You can still find me streaming constantly. I don't know what I'm going to do now that my hardcore character actually made it to 60, but I'll still be streaming at twitch.tv slash Bob. So come by say hi i'll be streaming all of our raids which are tuesday and thursday and then any extra raids too so maybe we'll even get some streams of some pv some pvp going we'll just have to see all right guys let's get out of here it's a good show it was yeah, a thanks good. so much for having me man i really appreciate the, uh, the, the the platform yeah I've thank already, you uh... 
I'm already putting out feelers in Discord while we are still talking for Noobcore. I'm trying to get trying to get our <laughs> ten together. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. think that, I think we can do it. We got some gamers in our guild. I think we. Can, yeah, can I think we could do so. We could maybe do alliance. So it'd be kind of deep. Yeah, yeah. I'd get the oh, other yeah. perspective. I don't know anything about hordes. So I'd rather. <laughs> and that. we have sheep just right there for us yeah the sheep are waiting there for us (laughs) i heard that and i was like kill sheep i've been doing that since day one (laughs) i I think the hardest part for alliance runs to give you a heads up is the to get to sfk at level whatever level you go is pretty pretty rough Uh, i died at level what level do we try i think we did sfk at 19 i died at 19 just swimming because we were swimming to uh south shore and i aggroed a naga on the corner of south shore he just saw me out of the corner of his eye and ran across the swam across the water and right into my my body is oh, i'm setting my sights low right now world record dead minds no lie <laughs> there you <laughs> go far. get yeah. there fairly easy there too, alliance so. rfc let's see what low uh, what how low level can you do yeah, RFC alliance, RFC, perfect. alliance what's the what's the lowest <laughs> level rfc hardcore alliance will get is it 60 <laughs> <laughs> all right guys Man. take it easy Bye. See you. All right, you guys can stop your local recording. We're still we're still live. I'm gonna. Oh, oh no. Um, are you uh, you're when are you going live for Noobcore? Uh, nine around nine thirty. Okay, so still a bit. Yeah. All right. yeah. We're gonna we're gonna raid somebody. Who should we raid here? Um, no hit your arms on. Solve delays on. We could do well. Let's do someone new. Let's do uh, let's do Zyreen and tell him he needs to come on the show. He has a real interesting back story. I'd love to have him on. All right, guys, tell him to come on uh, Warcraft Reloaded. Thank you guys for coming on and hanging out, and definitely check out Jamin's noob noobcore later tonight. Yes. Thank you, guys. All right. Go ahead and raid now. All right. Let me stop this. I found out the hard.